I feel like this is a hand that Jang possibly could have folded. He's opening into the chip leader and also the shortest stack. If he folds this hand, it gives Peters and Yuzonas a better chance to clash and therefore he can just lock up a ladder because there's going to be a lot of spots where Yuzonas shoves and then Peters has a short stack to call Null in. So I feel like this might be a little bit too wide to be opening the jack eight on the button. The dream flop for David Peters though, two pair. And he started this hand very shallow indeed. He does check. Jiang had the betting lead pre-flop and continues on the flop, I'd say quite optimistically into two players with very little of a connection to this flop. Yazonas sandwiched between the two players, can't really do too much with his ace nine of diamonds you wouldn't imagine. Peters looking for a check shove. I would imagine, given that Yang opened this button into two stacks, that I imagine Peters doesn't expect him to open that wide, that we'll just see a check shove on the flop, but his honest could be fine. I was going to say, he could find himself in a situation like yesterday. He tree bet the 6-5 off, and D. Peters ended up all in with Ace-King behind him, and he was getting about 3-1 to one on the call, and he couldn't make it. And now he's going to find himself in a position where Peters is, of course, going to shove the flop now, and he's just going to have to make another, probably, what will seem like an embarrassing fold, so to speak. Just so get his hand caught in the cookie jar. 225 from Zhang. Three bets to 600, sorry, a raise from Yuzonis to 650,000. The three bet shelf imminent from Peters with his two pair. The thing is for Peters, if he calls here, people might be wanting him to trap. But if he calls, it's just very obvious he has something really, really strong. Whereas if he gets here with like the nut flush draw, maybe he, he has to be all at this point. Or like a five, six of clubs or something with really good equity. Obviously, it's a spot where he's never really bluffing. So it doesn't particularly matter, but... I think better just to put the chips in whilst you've almost certainly got the best hand. And like Vitter says, your zone is now. Whoops. It's pretty funny that both times he's made a move like this, that it's D. Peters that's woke up with the legit hand behind him. And that was a significant part for Peters, who's now up to 26 big blinds out of the danger zone. Patrick Antonius, the low man at the table with 13 big blinds. I'm sure you've heard by now there's a big event coming to the Bahamas in January 2019. The first ever PokerStars Players No Limit Hold'em Championship. The ultimate player experience. A 25k buy-in event with 8 million contributed to the prize pool by PokerStars plus an extra million added to first place prize money. Now that 8 million contributed comes from the Platinum Passes. A Platinum Pass is a great package. It's free entry to this 25K event, plus spending money, flights, and accommodation. And there are more than 300 Platinum Passes being awarded over the course of this year. We've given away several already. There's more to give out over the rest of 2018. Some in live events like the EPT, some online. If you want the details on how you could potentially win a Platinum Pass, head to PokerStarsLive.com. And number 40 of the final table. Blinds are currently 60,000, This is level 30 of the EPT Monte Carlo main event. Not going to play seven deuce this time, Georgi. King Queen for Patrick Antonius. Short stack at the table. On we the button. Ten big blinds. We are going to see an all-in every single time. Yeah, and I don't think any other choice but to shove. And he is all in. A red triangle. And Dumont's got the ace eight of diamonds. Ooh. Got a call. Hmm. Obviously, you don't want to double up Patrick Antonius, one of the most dangerous players at the table. But given that he's the shortest stack right now and how wide he's shoving the button, I believe you got to... I just can't fold ace eight suited. Well, he's going to get a count. 1.3 million. Just over 10 bags. Even if he calls and loses here, he's still going to be in pretty much joint first place. Sounds like he's just announced call. Here we go, poker fans. Patrick Antonius all in and at risk on an EPT final table. He will need to improve to stay in this tournament. His king queen versus Dumont's ace eight of diamonds. Another coin flip. <laughs> He'll take it, 42%. <laughs> you run well with these, you'll be all right. As much as everyone likes Antonius, we'll the people on the table will be very much hoping he doesn't get the double up. Let's gamble. <laughs> Do you think 
good. We have a lot of people. Like it's 50 /50. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel. We have a lot of people in the chat rooting for Patrick Antonius. A lot of people calling for kings and queens. There is his wife on the rail. 42% of the time he wins every time. The flop does not have a king or a queen, but it does give Patrick additional outs. Now a jack will make him a straight. Ten cards Patrick can hit. Still has the same equity he had pre-flop. Yeah, still over 40% chance he stays alive here. A nine will do him no favors. Just one card to come. Patrick Antonius needs a king, queen, or jack on the river, or we lose the last remaining former EPT champ. River card is a seven, and that will do it for Patrick Antonius. It was 13 years ago that he won his EPT title in Bard. No second trophy for him, but a sixth place finish worth 139,050 euros. And at least he doesn't have a long journey home. King 10 of diamonds for Honglin Zhang. He raises to 250,000. King Jack for Yazonis. I think this is a really reasonable spot for Yazonis to put in a three bet, to put in another raise. He does have Yang covered, so he can apply some pressure. He's got reasonable blockers to strong hands, kings, jacks, ace king. His hand probably not good enough to want to call, although versus the cutoff, you could certainly make an argument for it. I do like a raise, though, and it looks like Yazonis does too. He's coming in for a three bet to 750,000. Are you a fan, Finton? Yeah, I like it. I'm not surprised, given how we've seen Yazonis play. I heard briefly mentioned in the commentary earlier on that he has the highest amount of online winnings from a player from Lithuania. I feel your guy does this every time it's his big blind. He kind of gives him the stare. He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You realize he's in the big blind here. I'll bluff you with anything. I don't know what he would say with seven twos. He did it yesterday when he had seven five of hearts, right? And it went Use raised button. Bank. Yeah, small blind jammed, and he used the time bank. Maybe, like you say, it's like a don't mess with my big blind. The problem, of course, is <laughs> they're getting the information on delay. Yeah. You're not doing anything with seven five. Yeah. Or are you? Did Shane just say all in? He wow. did. He shoves with a king ten, gets a fold from the better hand. Wow. That is a very, very ballsy jam because there are a lot of people shorter than Jang at this table, so to pull the trigger there is quite something. Tell you what, Zhang's come alive. Not sure what he had during the break, but he is stepping it up several gears. Dumont opened on the button with King-7. Zhang three betting with Ace-4 off from the small. And I hope our Twitch viewer who is railing his fellow countrymen decided to stay up for this coverage, because as you say, Zhang now is making all the moves. A three bet here to 825k. Yazonis in the big blind with a 10-5 offsuit is going to eventually fold. And King-7 offsuit on the button for Dumont. Again, not a particularly playable hand. I felt for you during the first level, by the way, Finton, when all these people were making references to Hans Gruber, and all I could think is, poor Finton will have absolutely no idea what they're talking about. But in that situation, I'm at home, I can Google, I don't have to be embarrassed, I can just nod and smile when I'm in here, and I'm like, yeah, Hans Gruber, yeah, yeah that guy. It looks like Dumont. 50, sorry, 17, 7. I said what? I thought you said all in. 1725, I think. Okay. No. 1750. Excuse me? I want to say Is he four betting? There's some confusion about what he said verbally. The intention is clearly to four bet. Zhang thought he heard him say all in. In fact, he was verbally declaring a bet of 1.75 million. So, yes, a four bet from Dumont, whose instincts seem to be finely tuned. 
like an engine in the car he uses to teach people how to drive. Is there anything Zhang can do here? No, he's just going to have to fold. And that's the power of being the, the biggest stack at the table. You want a three bet me? A four bet it right back. So we now reach hand 52. It's the qualifier first to act. Starts the hand with a 23 big blind stack and he's got ace king. Oh, this could be a big moment for Georgi. Huge hand. See his sizing. He has been on the bigger side of things. 280,000. Pretty reasonable. Yep. And it, you spoke about the, the, the antes being yeah. a little bit more now that we're five-handed, Finton. So it's 2.5x, the big blind. Yep, seems solid. Dumont with king-10 suited. Playing five-handed, you certainly might want to play this hand in some capacity, be it a re-raise, be it a flat call. We are going to see just a call. Now, Zhang has shown an inclination this level to get a little bit frisky. He's picked up pocket fours on the button. Obviously, we can see if he was to shove here, he probably will get called. So He's all in. Yes, he shoved the button with the wow. fours. Georgi's gone full Palpatine. We can see it's going to be a flip, but I feel like these fours is a little bit on the wide side, given how tight Georgi has been. Man, look, does Steve Peters have a decision? Has he still got cards in front of him? No, Peters no. has folded. The qualifier has to decide whether to call all in with Ace King. This is a race he has to take. Yeah, we just saw him take the Ace 10 shove, so I think if he's taken that spot, he's got to take this one. Ace King's such a huge hand, five handed. And obviously, you'd rather be the one getting your chips in with the Ace King, but out of a 23 big blind stack, he cannot race fold this hand. Completely no, agree. Not. Shortest stack in the tournament as well right now. But the, the, you can't take it away from that. This is still a huge moment. He's going to be all in and at risk with five people left in the EPT. And as he said himself, he wants to win. He wants the glory. He's deep palpatine. I don't know what that signifies. Looks like he's playing more time bank cards, buying more thinking time. You've got to realize this is the culmination of his dream. He's six days work towards this point. It could be all over in a flash if he gets it in loses. So you'll forgive him a minute just to take stock of what's going on. Cool. He calls. And Dumont, no doubt, will fold pretty quickly, meaning that we are going to flip these cards over and we are going to flip a coin. Classic race underway at the final table. Our qualifiers, Ace King against Honglin Zhang's Christian pocket Bosman fours. Did. He's got to be pretty happy to see himself in a flip when he shoves the fours and gets called. Absolutely. He could so easily have been dominated. Georgi needs to hit. And remember, we did see a king folded by Dumont. That's why the fours are a 57% favorite here. I'm nervous for him. You know he's going on a lap around the table if he wins as well. What a tense moment. Our qualifier all in and at risk and needs help to stay alive. <laughs> Zhang's sister hoping that fours hold. He'll be left with 855k, seven bigs if he loses this flip. Wow. Oh no, four in the window. We well, it's not over yet, but it's a great start for Zhang. Ah. We're going to need to see some running cards or a qualifier is going to be out in fifth place. Let's have a ten of clubs for a sweat. It's the six of spades, which means he is drawing dead on the turn. And sadly, Christian Georgi's journey comes to an end here. The online qualifier who won his seat in a spin and go busts in fifth place, cashing for 184,000 euros. An amazing return on investment, an amazing result. He will always be remembered for that hand yesterday, that amazing bluff with the seven deuce. It'll be seen by people around the world for years to come. And he says he's going to be back in Barcelona. And I cannot wait to see this guy again. So much emotion, so much passion over the last few days. I love to see that he went and shook everybody's hand whilst he celebrated them moments. I don't think he ever went into anybody's face. And as much as he was, you know, he had the moments, he was a good loser as well. He shook everyone's hand. He said he'd see him in Barcelona. 
Congratulations on a very big score. So that was 2018, this is 2022. We are here at the Monte Carlo Bay Hotel and Resort for the PokerStars EPT, presented by Monte Carlo Casino. It's James Harshkin alongside Griffin Benger. Howdy, everyone. And we are into the evening session now. Just before the dinner break, we burst the bubble. Everyone is in the money now with 157 players remaining, but we still have more than three hours of poker to play tonight. And we have a new feature table. You asked for him, you've got him. Spraggy's coming to the main stage. Two team pros, Ben Sprague and Rafa Mares, plus Klaus Segebrecht, who plays a sick one online. And don't sleep on Fabian Quas, uh, a regular of the EPT. Uh, when, back when I was playing him back in ten, eight, nine years ago, he was a real presence, so great to see him in action too. Back inside the Salle des Etoiles, players returning from that 70-minute dinner break. And we are going to pick up the action midway through level 15. Blinds are still 2,000, 4,000 with a 4K big blind ante. And we can see the players who are coming to the main stage, taking their seats at our new post-dinner break feature table. <laughs> of hours in, in a week, you could be better. <laughs> so Griffin, everyone has now locked up 8,690 euros, and that's the payout until we get to 143 when it goes up to 9,300. <laughs> but everyone really has their eyes on that near 1 million euros up top. There's Spraggy getting his, getting his mic checked. You wanted him, here he is. <laughs> I know I'm, I'm kind of sat in your place, but he told me to move there, so if you like, put your cards on there, but maybe look at them here. So Andrew Hume is the other Brit at the table alongside it's going to be hard for me to Spraggy. Not so okay. Here? Right now? Good. Sorry, I need just to post this. Oh, yeah. oh, really? Okay. Yeah, that's okay. fine. As long as that beautiful to trophy. Hand. Yeah, the main event trophy okay. to be presented on Saturday. This is only day two of a five-day main event. So today we have played into the money. We will now play through what we like to call the post-bubble bust-out bonanza. Yeah. We'll conclude play just before one in the morning. Yeah. Long day today, and it's going to be a long day tomorrow as well, Griffin. And then we'll play down to the final table on Friday and play down to a winner on Saturday. <coughs> Make sure you're with us for the next three days of coverage. So we just referenced the min cash. When we get to that final table on Saturday, Griffin, life-changing money up for grabs. Six-figure scores for the final seven and close to a million euros for the winner, the single biggest slice of the 5.2 million euro prize pool. A lot of money to be played for once we get to that stage. And as we've said, a lot of play left before we get to Saturday, but it's gonna be a lot of exciting action here. And you know we're gonna have those feature tables that have a lot of really eclectic and interesting players, such as everyone's favorite, Benjamin Sprague. Looks like we are now going to get cards in the air and kick off the second half of level 15. And time for us to introduce guest commentator live by satellite from Los Angeles, Maria Ho. Hi, guys. We're still selling them on this whole satellite thing, right, James? Everyone believes us. <laughs> How are you doing, Maria? I'm doing pretty well. Just been following the action, having a little bit of FOMO, oh, as you do. Um, but it looks like still there's nice. still a lot of good names left, and it's obviously really exciting for people to be back in Monaco. Just a tremendous, amazing location to play poker. Yeah, well, this event, Maria, almost a victim of its own success. 
A field of 1,073, much bigger than we've had in recent years, and that's why we are having to play longer days to ensure we can get this to its conclusion on Saturday. I guess when you're nine hours Lock behind it Europe, it's Lock not really a problem. Look, guys. <laughs> gentle head, I guess. Yeah, and the bubble didn't really take quite as long as I think some people might have expected. So That's ooh, true. Things will probably start moving along right now, post-bubble bust-out bonanza and all. Yeah, well, average stack right now is 205,000. Only two players at this feature table have above average stacks. Table chip leader Ferenc Deek, who's playing 500k, and Fabian Quas, who's playing 210k. Spraggy's on the short side, 24 bigs. But all ends can be pretty exciting, so um, That's true. You know, we're going to have some opportunities, I think, for some, some chips to get in. That's a lot of chips, though, and a nice starting hit here on the button for Deke. There's Fabian. There's Spraggles. Get a haircut, man. <laughs> 25 effective, just going to play as a call here with the ace three. You know, not really in that sort of shove and hope you can get it through on a button open stack depth here. So I like this, this flat and wow, a lot of action right away. Ooh. Top pair versus the flush draw. Are you feeling it, Maria? Do you think ace is going to hold here? I mean, I feel like the fans want it to, right? Because Spraggy is such a fan favorite. But I yeah. don't know. I kind of like the Queen Nine of Clubs in this spot. Yeah, and the, the other very big question about this hand is not just about holding, but is Spraggy going to be able to hold on if he continues to have the best hand throughout these streets? You know, if you're faced with a bet here and a big bet on the 10 turn and then a shove on the King River, are you calling Ace Three when the club doesn't come out? So, um, you know, it's not going to be an easy time, I think, for here. And that is quite a quite a large bet to get things kicked off. Uh, Fourteen thousand, representing fifteen percent of Sprague's remaining stack. Yeah, Spraggy is going to have just a little bit over pot back. It's going to be interesting to see how Deke, um, what the intention of such a large seabed on the flop is. Oftentimes you would see maybe something a little smaller here to create more room to sort of bet bet here, but instead it's one big bet and a check hoping to pop off that club. Bracky just really has the decision if he wants to pursue what some people could consider to be kind of thin value. Obviously, with the check back, you don't expect Deke to have some of the big aces. But, of course, you would really hate being put in a position to go for kind of a small value bet in this spot and then perhaps get shoved on. <clears throat> Yeah, and that is a particular sizing that looks exact. It looks a lot like what it is, you know, the ace three. So it does open the door for Deke to maybe attack it and represent that that seven. But you know, we'll just just kind of depends what kind of mood he's in. All right. And there it is. Oh. <laughs> Listen, if the man shows up at the feature table wearing that pink shirt, I feel like he's in some type of mood. You know, that's a vibe right there. You're going to attack this sizing here, represent perhaps that straight. Just a lot of just a lot of this has to do with Spraggy sizing. You know, I think when mm -hmm. you see that sizing on the river, unless you put your opponent on a straight and trying to induce, you know, you're going to very likely want to attack. Yeah, and this, and this is the responsibility of Spraggy by betting that size to call a decent amount of the time when you are shoved on here. Um, because it is going to, you know, tempt your opponent. You bet, you know, one-eighth pot and get... And, and I just think oh. uh, 
you know, yeah. that's that's really, that's too bad, but I, I understand being in that spot. So few people left, you know, everyone's watching at home. But, Not an easy call to me. But Griffin, that hand was on the internet. That hand's gonna be on TV. <laughs> Spraggy will never be able to live this down. I'll make sure of the, that. <laughs> the chat pros are already flooding the chat, guys. It's I mean, all if, over. Yeah, if you're gonna set yourself up to, to get exploited, you're gonna have to be, at least give yourself a little more time there and really, right? really think on about, screen, you know, yeah, on the big screen. Oh, and also about it there. But it, uh, it almost felt yeah. like Spraggy <laughs> was never going to be able to work up the courage to make that call there. Yeah, I mean, certainly can't fault Spraggy for I'll going for that yeah. value on the river. But of course, if you play it as a bluff catcher <laughs> and check call, it perhaps would put you in an easier situation I unless no your opponent shoves here, yeah. when check to. Well, Ferenc Deek, so who managed to bluff Spraggy yeah. off the best hand there, has just over 270k in live earnings and has had a big stack for most of this main event. Stefan Saltzman from Switzerland is the player here. Raising under the gun with Jack-10. You do realize if Fabian's still at this feature table in an hour's time, when Mr. Stapleton returns to the airwaves, you are going to have to endure a lot, and I mean a lot, of quas puns. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the quas we have to bear. <laughs> oh, don't you start, Griffin. Well, that was... Raise and take it for Saltzman. Obviously, Maria, I'm, I'm grateful you can join us via the miracles of modern technology, but it would have been so nice to have you in Monte Carlo. I guess from your point of view, it would have been nice to play in Monte Carlo. Guys, I, I already said I've max FOMO. I know you guys had that one early night and probably had some drinks and got to hang out with each other, which I missed out on. Um, and of course, the players party. I saw a little bit of that on Stapes' Instagram stories and playing, of course, but Really would have been nice to catch up with all of you guys. Let's, let's hope the game was going to take away your attention. Well, at least you can enjoy it from afar and marvel in the beautiful design the of EPT 2022. Sure. You guys have any bets on? No. Not for me. Major to qualify was like 10 to 3. That was so tempting. Looks like Fabian Quas is going to play a hand here. We haven't seen his whole cards. We know he's raised to 8,000. I'm here. Oh, deuces. Undersea Monkey observing that if Fabian makes four of a kind, we could see hashtag death by Quas. <laughs> Can't top that one. I'm enjoying Stefan Saltzman, by the way. This is a solid look. Queen, seven, five. Deuce is still good. Is actual, yeah, and his actual holding makes it obviously a little bit difficult to get to showdown. So, just this bet and being able to take it down right here would be absolutely tremendous <laughs> for his actual holding. But does get a call from Salzman? Interesting. Five, six, seven. Oh, got shot. Yeah, I wouldn't mind betting a little bigger on the flop just to dissuade these kind of floats just to take it down but and also it just becomes incredibly difficult to to play once this street is floated by so much of 
Soulsman range. I mean, how are you, you going to find a call here with deuces on the river? You know, if you bet something like between seven and nine thousand, I think you probably get a yeah. fold like from something like ten nine. Soulsman betting sixteen thousand on the river. Cross folds the best hand. And hello to Exotic Chaotic. He says, I look forward to being your qualifier in Barcelona. Got in for $0 through PokerStars VR. Congratulations. Free rolling your way to Barcelona. We'll see you there in August for the next EPT. Maria, I know you get pulled in a million and one directions. I know you're very busy right now. What is the prospect that you can make it to Barcelona, or is it too early to say? James, I would literally do anything to be there. Like, I'm going to be there. I will make it happen. I don't <laughs> care who I have to upset, what other prior commitments I'm going to have to back out from. Count me in. But also, don't play this back if I... <laughs> I <was gonna laughs> no, say. I'm, I'm, this I'm, is being I'm, recorded, serious, Maria. <laughs> <laughs> I will... Add, I, I'm honestly going to do everything in my power to be there. Maria's new late-night chat show on NBC just got commissioned. But sorry, guys. She's going to turn down a multi-million dollar offer so she can play UFT Barcelona. I would like to order coffee. Yeah. Okay. Very for, fortuitous situation here for Maria on the button. Brazilian with... The James and Joes, just over 30 big blinds. So I'm going to be honest with you guys. I don't really know Rafael that way, that well. One of the team pros I'm not that familiar with. Um, plays as GM Valter online. Oh, jeez. Comes from a chess background. GM Valter is a big time player. <clears throat> Poker stars. 1.6 million in live earnings and. Uh, Suffice to say, he spent most of this week hanging out with Neymar. But yeah, <laughs> clearly accomplished live and online, Griffin. And absolute disaster striking oh. for Kloss here. I mean, this is just, think about the positions, the stack depth. Going to be so Good difficult yeah, to get good. away from this hand with uh, top pair against the button range. And Mariah's is just going to be licking his lips when he sees... They will come to take the drinks order. What I would think yeah, would be an inevitable call. Yeah, and proving that jacks are not that difficult to play, guys. <laughs> really. Easy game. And he's going to play it as a raise, deciding, you know what, I have 23 big blinds. I'm willing to play for stacks here. So let's maybe induce a worst hand from Segebrick, uh, from Mariah's, pardon me, something like maybe King-10. You know, 9-10 with a backdoor flush draw might shove over this check raise. I don't think Segebrick has any intention of folding, taking this line, doing it for value. Maybe a little more chips than I would feel comfortable personally check raising and getting in, but certainly um, I, I completely understand why the range of hands that Marias is going to have on the button here. Ooh, and that might save Sagabrick here. Yeah, that is definitely the worst card in the deck. It's the, ki it's the kind of card that Klaus was trying to protect from by choosing to play his hand as a raise on the flop. And because Marias had such a strong hand and didn't just put him all in right then and there as griffin mentioned this could help Klaus get away we will see yeah i think it has huge potential to save his tournament life here we look at the stack to pot ratio about one to one here but Moranis is going to bet i would imagine quite small on this turn and is klaus going to be able to have the alarm bells ringing and get away It's also tough for Marais thinking, well, you know, the check raise bluffs are just going to check fold here when I bet. And the queens that were willing to get it in that I could have maybe got it in with on the flop 
are now real scared. So how do I keep my customer? There is the very tiny bet of 14,000. Just about 20% of the pot. Please don't fold. <laughs> yeah, pretty gross for Klaus here because, you know, in some regard, it's a very, very small size bet, but you've got to feel pretty bad about the holding that you have, knowing that that turn definitely can hit Marais's range quite hard. And it looks like he's just reeling him in. Yeah, and, and, you know, not a great um, unpaired card to have for Segebrick with the 9 there, you know, blocking 9-10, which would be one of the bluffs that Marais might have. Quite an interesting river. It seems like the way this is running out is giving... Segebrecht an opportunity to escape through the window and only lose about 35% of his stack. Wish we had windows. <laughs> <laughs> We're in a basement, Maria. This is what you're missing out on. I did see some BTS, uh, I think, on Nick Walsh's uh, Twitter. But yes, it doesn't look like there's a lot of light coming in <laughs> there. I mean, when you say you saw BTS on Nick Walsh's Twitter, that could mean one of two things. Exactly. Because yes. he is a big K-pop fan, and that is his favorite boy band. Really? I can't even tell if this is a bit. It's probably true. <laughs> I, I, I'm, t I, I'm tending to believe that this is true. This feels like up Nick Walsh's alley. And the dilemma here for Marias is, you know, if I do think my opponent has a queen here, do I consider shoving here, trying to find a hero call? And, you know, there's just not enough of the of the range there that I think is going to call. So instead, Klaus is going to get a bit lucky based on the run out. After having started, quite unlucky, of course, <laughs> flopping top pair and getting so coolered. <clears throat> So Rafael Moraes now playing a 44 big blind stack. Frank Deek still the table chip leader with 135 bigs. Uh, Spraggy hovering around the 15 big blind mark. And we're down to 145 players now. So that means we are getting close to the first money jump. What I like to call the min plus cash. Have to stay alert. Mm. Get some green seeds. with Queens. Also known as the Quas and Quasses. <laughs> Just because Joe isn't here, Griffin, doesn't mean you have to overcompensate. <laughs> you shouldn't have told me that this was like a, you know, this was a, this was a bit. I'm basically just calling back to classic EBT coverage. So just to be clear, you're calling back to coverage you haven't seen, but because I alluded to it, you're pretending. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I want to be. I want to be included. <laughs> well, that was raise and take it. 
have to say, this isn't exactly a bonanza, is it? It doesn't seem we're seeing bust out after bust out after bust out. And by that, I mean not from the feature table, obviously, but just mm. from the outer tables as well. The, the, the tick is going down, but at a steady pace. It's not like we're struggling to keep up with it. That feels like three different cups of caffeinated beverages that Fabian Quas was just sipping. Yeah, it's kind of that dilemma when you get to this time at night where you feel you just need that boost to get you through the last few hours, but you know you'll regret it when you're lying in bed at 1 a.m. and you can't get to sleep. Oh, yeah. If I drink coffee after 3 p.m., <laughs> my mind will just race until 3 in the morning. It's just not <laughs> going to happen for me. So I'm the same. Caffeine after 4 p.m., and I just cannot sleep. You know what I love having with my coffee, though? A croissant. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I'm very happy, oh. by the way, just talking to Maria. So, you know, <laughs> I can basically press this red button, unplug your headset, and you can sit in the corner and think about what you did. We're in France, man. Croissants are great. <laughs> I, I didn't want to like it, but I, I have to admit that I did. So, you know, good one, Griffin. Okay, guys, we've got a couple of memes here. We've got the Grafton for Marais. We've got artisanal sourdough for Hume. Yes, play it as a shove. Whom fan of the stream, clearly. Knows what to do with that. Artisanal sourdough. Sourdough. There's a virtual all in, and he wins the pot. Yes, Aaron, thank you for correcting Mr. Benja. We are not in France. We are in Monaco, which is a principality. You're, right. You're absolutely which borders right. France. subdued coming back from dinner. I think it's because they all had some heavy dinners with a lot of butter, some cream sauces involved. More likely they just grabbed a burger from the snack <laughs> bar. Beautiful king queen of clubs for Fabian Quas. This summer, Fabian Quas. Now, interesting. I saw Fabian in Prague a couple of months ago, but before then, have not seen him for a while. Well, that's why it's so great to see him. I haven't seen him for you know and eight nine years. Exactly. And before anyone says, "Oh, it's because there's been no live poker." Now, I mean for like the four or five years before that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can attest to that. He wasn't really on the scene much, even leading up to the pandemic. Yeah. Great flop against Deke's one card. Only losing to one hand. And that might have been heard from pre-flop. I think we can assume that a call in this flop would mean Deke is holding something in the realm of ace-10, ace-jack. Maybe something like ace-x of hearts if the price was good enough. It was a small bet on the flop. Ace-3 also in the range.
Quas, though, definitely can pursue value from worse queen X's and, of course, jack X's that are going to feel a little bit more comfortable about their hand with the three pairing. So just a little too strong to necessarily be fearful that Deke has that 3X type holding. And on the turn, Deke folds. And you'll notice that we are now down to 138 players. I can tell you about some of the recent eliminations we've seen. Players who've departed over the course of the last 10 minutes as part of this bust out bonanza. Leo Margetz was on our feature table earlier. She's cashed out for. 8,690 euros. Another player from that table who also went bust out, Davidi Katai. No! Love watching the Davidi Katai hands. Let's just go on YouTube or you already know. And shortly after that, Christoph Vogelsang, but he did make the pay jump. So we're now paying out 9,320 euros. Heading back across the Salle des Etoiles to the main stage, our feature table. Now, if it's the main stage of the main, doesn't that make it the main main stage? No, no, no. Go back to doing cross puns. <laughs> <laughs> yes, stop fan. 5k euro buy in. 5,000 euro main event. 1,073 total entries across the two day ones, and now 136 players remaining. We have a comment on Twitch suggesting with, with Vogel Sang's departure, the tournament will go 3x speed. Well, I will say that Fabian Quas, in my in my memory, is from the slower play um, age as well. So yeah. don't worry, we still got some slow play for you, some slow European play. Well, don't forget, tomorrow is day three, and that's when we introduce the shot clock, oh, and that's yeah. when we put Bernie the Lizard to work. And day four, the shark cage. That not, that's one. <laughs> Can you imagine if we just introduced the shark cage for a random level of a 5K oh, main man. event? I would love it. Everyone would be coming to me for expert advice. <laughs> for the ego. Plot twist. <laughs> Trust me, Griffin, if I have any advice on how to bank a $1 million free roll, I'll come to you for advice. <laughs> Oh, one comment on Twitch. The shark cage was so fun to watch. I got someone that's going to be on my side, but an all winner is season three. <laughs> you stop. <laughs> stop. <laughs> Whipping that deceased Equus. I don't know about like a winner's only, but I say bring back shark cage. Yes. I always say. I'll never say never. I would love to bring it back. I just don't know how and when, but. Salzman might be inclined to call here for such a small amount. Almost certainly, actually. It is only about six and a half big blinds, and that's going to be, you know, you, you kind of know you're behind here, but you put it in with the ace-nine suited, I think, and see where it takes you. So kings all in, called by ace nine. Pretty decent percentage, as you can see. No, 
no clubs and those kings. 32% of the time, this is gonna work every time. Well, King's holding, and Sunmez set for a double up here. Just a club to get the blood pumping. Doesn't have to be like the 10 or the 6 or the jack, you know? Just, just, just a little club. Just a club. It is a club. Oh. And it is the jack. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one that was All right. the <laughs> However, with it being the jack of clubs, this could be a case of too many outs. I gotta say, the poker gods really have a flair for the dramatic. Five hearts, Oof. not enough. <laughs> and Sun Mets will double up through Saltzman. Mark down the day, the date, and the time. Someone all in with kings against a random ace, and there was not an ace on the desk. But there was a jack on the rack. Creating too many outs. <clears throat> oh, what a cute bear uh, shirt. Paddington vibes. You a Paddington guy? Watch it with the kids? I remember liking the cartoons when I was a kid. Oh, the movies are fantastic. Uh... Have you tried watching them? Yeah, I thought the first one was okay. I, I, I switched the second one off half an hour in. I thought it was terrible. Oh, wow, okay. Jeff Critic. 100% of reviewers like Paddington 2, 0% of Hardigans. Spraggy's not doing much, is he? Uh, no. no, but he's uh, hanging on for that pay jump, though. Okay, when is the next pay jump? That's a really good question. When we're down to 119, <laughs> and he's okay, got well. a 13 big blind stack. Marias always looking like he'd rather be 10 tabling online poker stars. <laughs> so slow. GM Volter, a huge reg over the last 10 years online. Over 15 bigs with the king queen offsuit decides to pass. Yeah, I think that's, you know, a bit on the cautious side. I think that you don't, maybe feeling like you need to sort of shove or fold and it's maybe um, a notch too weak for what you want to really be, be busting in middle position with how deep this plays, the long levels. But it's great, it's got great, you know, playability and blocker ability to just open as a raise. And I think I would have probably preferred that than just open folding. But I understand you just doubled up. Maybe you don't want to just like instantly get involved in this sort of tricky, you know, mid-tier, mid-position hand with just 16 bigs. No. Oh, okay. Oh. Great fold. Yes. It can be tempting, you know, you see a cutoff open from one of the chip leaders, and certainly the chip leader of the table. And, you know, a flat from Fabian, which could be, you know, something like Queen Jack suited that's prepared to fold for 13 big blinds facing a shove. Um, but good discipline, not even thinking twice. Good fold from Spraggy. Because Quas would have picked him off. So three way to this flop, and it's top pair for Deke, second pair for Moraes. Oh, and Marais gets that more ace. Two pair. Two pair is better than one pair. 
says that on this bit of paper I've got here. I do, so do see you referring to that when you're what? not sure about what beats what. What on earth is a boat? <laughs> it's just, it's what they call a, a full, full house. Oh. It's the same thing. It's okay. the same thing, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Griffin. Mm -hmm. Always coming nobody seven, willing. but doesn't change Yeah, and, and nobody willing to do the bidding for Moraes, and he checks once again. Deku has checked his pair of kings twice now. Does look like he's reaching, feels like it's finally time to perhaps get a little bit of value. Yeah, and if you're wondering at home, why is Moraes not betting up to this point? Well, Moraes has the weakest range on this board, being the third person in from the blinds. And, you know, because this was checked through on the king and because it was checked through on the ace, um, you know, a lot of the time Moraes is going to think, these two don't have anything. They're not going to call if I bet. Um, you know, it doesn't make a ton of sense for me to be kind of betting here anyways. So it's going to be a nice opportunity to check raise against bluffs and thin value bets like, you know, weak aces or checked on the flop kings like Deke has. So I think Maurice is playing this very, very well. And the question now is, you know, what's the sizing here? Is it is it north of 30? Is it something in the range of 23 to 27? Definitely an opportunity to make it look quite bluffy. But you're going to expect Deke in this spot to be basically quick folding with the bluffs and then be really in the hurt locker with the hands like this. Yeah, especially when Deke went for such a small sizing. We saw Deke be on the opposite end yeah. of this scenario against Braggy. So that's got to be running through his mind, too, is when I go for this sizing, does that give Moraes a little mm -hmm. bit more of that inclination to go ahead and attack that sizing. Certainly a tough spot for people to be bluffing as play, but then when you run through the hands that Marius can have and the ones that he's representing to be able to check raise this on the end, Deke might be a little suspicious. Yeah, and Marais is certainly someone that's capable of making a play like this and attacking this small, um, you know, thin value bet so certainly going through the head of Deke, I mean, just like you, you were saying, Maria, this is someone who's aware of the dynamic of this particular river spot because we've seen it, you know, just two rotations ago in that hand against Spraggy where he went all in on the river facing, you know, that small, small bet. So really, really interesting spot here, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see a call or a fold. Question from Cubar89 on YouTube. Can any of the commentators answer the question if there are any Polish players? I will be honored. Thank you. <coughs> no, we can't. Thank you for your question. Not Your my circus, not my monkeys. Is all ours. I have to suffer. Everybody has to suffer. Yesterday they were showing the other game. Uh, Liverpool was on, yeah. It's man seat, nobody cares about watching man seat. Good day so far for Rafael. And there's that beautiful trophy. You can look, but you can't touch. What's your Neymar? Neymar can touch. <clears throat> Average stack now up to 243,000 with 131 players remaining. Only one player at this feature table has an above average stack, and that player is Ferenc Deke, who's playing 126 big blinds. Uh-oh, uh -oh, as my... Co-host James Hardigan likes to say. The classicest and sickest of races. Yes. Yes, he said about it. About to be played. Knock it off your bingo card. James Hardigan said the thing. Ooh, around each side of the cards. That was nice. So that is Sernmez all in with Queens, and it will be all in to call for Klaas Segebrecht. And I find it appropriate that the player known as Sick One 
finds himself in this sick situation. Oh my god, that sick one is so good. So good. And Segebrecht is the at-risk player in this spot, needs to connect. <clears throat> Literally 50-50. Because of a folded queen? Correct. Hmm. That Griffin Benjamin right? just he pays attention. Yeah. He's on He's it. He's quick. I feel like I got a question on a test right. I mean, he's going to give the human calculator a run for his money pretty soon. He's in here. Don't, don't tell him that. 10-5-3 <laughs> on the flop. Queen's holding. Okay, this time I definitely think, you know, spice things up with a little straight draw. Well, Johnny, perhaps a deuce. The ducks do fly after all. A four, perhaps. Meh. Five of hearts, pairs the board. Klaus Segebrecht with six outs needs an ace or a king on the river to survive. Good luck, everyone. Good game. And Segebrecht is out. <coughs> and Klaas will be cashing out <coughs> for 9,320 euros. On three. <laughs> <laughs> Someone down that end of the table needs to double me up quickly, okay? Yeah, I look at all this. Game, right? oh, I've never seen green chips like that before. Are they 25,000? <laughs> There's all this too much, I think. Some redistribution of wealth down here. I liked it when it was like more like 1,000 and like 500, and it was like really intimidating. Like, nobody even cares about these. Uh, I can yeah. Mets playing a 32 oh, big fun. blind stack. Useful reminder of that URL there, pokestarslive.com. If you want any information, not just about the EPT, but all coming, or upcoming, I should say, live events, that is the place to go. All of the local tours, the upcoming Road to PSPC stops, full schedule at pokestarslive.com. Again, freaky with Ferenc Diki. He's open with ace nine of diamonds. Rafael Moraes with ace king of spades. Even though Moraes is a very capable player, I still like a different type of hand to call against the three bet. Yeah. I, I prefer something like a Broadway suited Jack 10, King Queen Jack, King Queen suited rather than the Ace X combination here. But I'm also not especially surprised given Deke's chip stack, knowing how capable I'm sure Marais is. There's now a bit of a dynamic going on between them. So maybe he wants to be a little stickier here with this half a million chip stack and not just, you know, fold to a 3x3 bet. Oh, Absolutely. Diamonds. Almost 50-50, despite being a domination situation. Not an easy spot to play, not even a spade to speak of on the flop. Oh, wow. Uh -oh. oh, well, hello there. Top, Diamonds top. are Deke's best friend. For Marais, but yes, the nut flush for Deke, who has 100% now. Yeah, well, just sort of a perfect 
situation to play is a check raise. And really going to put Moraes in it. So I think sometimes Moraes might be willing to sneak in some checkbacks here, knowing how capable Deke is and might start, you know, check raise bluffing, let alone, you know, the times that he does have a hand like this. But certainly couldn't fault him for firing a bet here. do want to protect against those hands that have equity that might call here. Something like ace queen with a diamond, maybe even two tens of the diamond would consider calling. Yeah, about two thirds pot is the bet. And I will say that that particular size, making it as large as Moraes did, doesn't really give Deke too much room to, you know, get tricky with bluffs, because it's difficult to check raise a bet like 41,000 to, you know, 85,000 or something when Moraes is only playing 160. So maybe that's part of it. Maybe the intention here is to bet big so you don't have to, you know, bet 20K and then get check raised or. To 50. Deke just trying to milk this for all that it's worth and just hoping that there's not a scare card on the river. And I Pretty don't much. know, Maria, if Marais can find a check back here. Yeah, I mean, the five of hearts is about as bricky mm -hmm. as it can be. Certainly, Moray's not one to shy away from going for value when he believes he could get called by worse. Yeah, I mean, you were talking about the kind of range that you would prefer to call with preflop in Deke's shoes. A lot of Broadway kind of combinations that, you know, would find themselves here on the flop and then check through there on the turn, whether that's, you know, king-queen suited or even queen-jack suited, suited that wants to get sticky. So those are the kind of hands that Moraes is probably thinking, I want value from. I could have a lot of bluffs here. Ooh, thinking yeah, about... He said it. <sighs> oh. You hate it when they throw in the chip so fast because yeah. you know it can't be good. Uh, just like that, <laughs> Rafael Moraes is eliminated. Yeah, quite a cooler. Too unfortunate to get that turn. Who would have thought Spraggy would outlast him? Well, if Spraggy keeps folding all the bad hands and all the good hands, can sneak into the top 100. I mean, yeah, I guess if you fold everything, right, you are going to outlast a certain number of players. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Varenk Deke is now up to 710,000, playing 177 big blinds. The field has dropped down to 129. You could, you could easily check back. Hang on, Spraggy, hang on. There's no hand. He gets a call from me. I wish someone didn't like me like that. <laughs> oh, we got some... Uh, Professional analysis here. Easily could have checked back. Ah, easy's a bit strong. But certainly possible. Christian asking about the pay jump. So I think we said it was 119. So yeah, if Spraggy can survive to 119th place, He'll uh -oh. win another thousand. However, Ace Nine. I think Spraggy um, does want to take a little pause here, simply because he's, he's not really getting spots that feel good. But I think that you also shouldn't feel too good about this spot. The two and a half X open from 
Fabian Quas. I think this is a bit ambitious. They are playing shorter handed because of the elimination. I understand. But yeah, I'm not I'm not uh, a big big fan of this shove. You know, we're we're talking about three more people behind. And you see the pause here from some potential strength behind, not just the kings. And that looks like queens or ace queen to me. And with the ace folded, yeah. more likely that it's queens. And this is, uh, it's a bit of a disaster for Spraggy, but does have that ace. And the, the desk often contains aces. Cern Metz having a think in the small blind. We know that he has a queen and that is a reshove. And Fabian Quas calls no, both really players, well. has got both players covered. <laughs> okay. And clearly well, has the best knowledge. hand. Thank you very much. That Me is too. very welcoming to hear. You get Spraggy's phone really. Relax. I've won from situations like this before. <laughs> and it looks like Ace Queen over there, actually. Maybe Ace Queen of Spades. Oof. I don't think yeah, so things looking really, really bad for Benjamin Sprague. I might have been in if he wasn't in. Six percent equity. Absolutely. Easy. I think so. To be fair. I think so. Was that? It has been an ace folded. Ace eight was folded on the button, so. <laughs> One less ace to speak of. <laughs> Spraggy gonna need a couple of nines or a goofy straight. Maybe a heck of a lot of diamonds. Good job making that far. <laughs> yeah. Now we need to put a few spades. Well, if Kings hold, we are gonna see a double KO here. Yeah, great opportunity for Quas. I can make the bottom end straight far. <laughs> <laughs> Ever the optimist. I feel like you're going to get some sort of swear. I'd like a swear. But then, I'd like I'm a realist. I think he's screwed. Here we are. <laughs> Anybody fold an ace? I didn't have an ace. No. That'd probably fold it too. Okay. Oh, here we go. Mm. Okay, well, some backdoor possibilities. Back draw for me there. And the flush draw for CERN Mets whose equity has gone up to 41%. Turn card Ooh. is the Jack of Ooh. Diamonds. Spraggy is <laughs> not <laughs> drawing <laughs> dead. Yeah. Not at all. That's the dream card, really, uh, for Spraggy. Seven is always coming. A made-for-TV run-out so far. Yes. No, seven. Oh. Instead, the eight of spades, which gives Cern Metz Good game. The flush. Good luck, everybody. Spraggy is KO'd. Cern Metz gets near enough a triple up. Not the best showing for Spraggy, certainly, but it's tough when you're coming in with not a lot of chips to work with. Um, and, you know, you happen to find yourself in a hand against Deke, who has a lot of confidence, a lot of chips, and right as the table starts, bluff you off the best hand. That would have been a great opportunity to get an early double. And then at that point, just card dead, not a lot of opportunities. Maybe a bit on the loose side with the, the reshove there, but you know, we've all been there, not finding a lot of spots, need to acquire somehow. And right there, ran into two monsters and is eliminated. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna say, if you were gonna offer him some advice on maybe the next time he plays a major live event, I say not folding the best hand on the river <laughs> is a really <laughs> solid strategy to follow. How much did you have at the dinner break? Um, Listen, it's uh, a lot easier for us here in the booth and the fans at home the seeing the hands. Yeah, yeah. And then three hands in a row. Mm -hmm. Queens, uh, kings, queens, and now is. Well, of course, we have had a couple of KOs from the feature table, and we currently only have five uh, players. So we need to wait for some players to be moved to the main mm -hmm. stage before we can continue. Sorry for your kings, but. 
I've seen it before, once or twice in my life. <laughs> Yesterday I lost uh, Kings against Ace King. Interestingly, both members of Team Pro have gone, Sprague and Moraes. Bust, they might and Sun Mets won get that three-way all-in. Now up to Two 75 big blinds. Man. Nothing better than getting sucked Ooh. out on the river by someone and then having a conversation where the guy yeah, starts no, talking about <laughs> Yeah, yesterday I saw <laughs> Kings <laughs> Aces lose to Kings. That's the, the conversation. I was just happening. thinking the same thing, Griffin. I was <laughs> like, nightmare. Okay, they don't yeah. need your empathy no, in this I don't moment. Need, I, yeah. Like... Uh uh. I mean, no. If you suck out, don't talk about the last time you were sucked out, okay? It's just not it's just not good form. Seven hundred and ten thousand chips for Deke. Whew. Are you all good now? Everything is blue bit. Between them. Uh, she means it's like this. Four hundred on the bottom. Okay. Yeah. There's so many chips you can't manage it. Right? <laughs> Imagine if I didn't get the penalty. <laughs> Two hand penalty. <laughs> what was it? Like 10k, right? 10k each. So those are the chip denominations. The yellows, the blues, and the greens in play right now. The 1k's, the 5k's, and the 25k's. <clears throat> it's like we're playing less hands here than so the much bubble. Nice. Oh, oh, the bubble. <laughs> no. I mean, we're, like, how many that hands one is we impossible to We beat. did promise some fast and furious eliminations right. based on the chip stacks, and we have seen that. A lot of all-in confrontations. And yeah. mostly the rich getting richer, like Deke. And we are down to 120, so with a one more elimination, we will hit that money jump. And I'm guessing that's why it's taking the Tony staff a short while to get really. players up to the main stage. We yeah, have just I mean, had a flurry of KOs. So yeah. balancing not, players not around the field is yeah. clearly their priority right now. We have rolled into level I might actually make another 16, by the way. Now playing 2K, 5K blinds with a 5K big blind yeah, ante. I'll tell you what, guys, while we are waiting to get new players up on the main stage and expand the lineup at the feature table, let's get you excited about something that's coming up in June. Something exciting coming exclusively to the PokerStars YouTube channel, which features Mr. Griffin Benger. Check this out. This is the moment you've all been waiting for. The Poker Star Championship. <laughs> Let's go. The reason we're here is because of him. Vamos ir a Rio e coroar. Platinum passes for your asses. Tell me it's 2020, baby. Hey, Steve O'Dwyer, how you doing today, bud? He's poker famous, right? This is my game. Welcome to my court. Believe me, bro, it's the one we need this hat. Woo! I'm still here, baby. I ain't going nowhere. He's one of the greatest poker players of all time. Two aces. Sit down over there. <laughs> In it to win it, boys. This is going to be a long six days. Go, let's get it. Highlights from the first ever Pokestars Players No Limit Hold'em Championship held in the Bahamas in 2019. Now, those TV shows have aired on TV networks around the world, but they are coming to our YouTube channel with new episodes every week throughout June and July. Griffin, I don't know if you had a chance to watch it when it was on Sportsnet in Canada, but if you didn't, you can watch it on YouTube. Yeah, you know what? I actually get a lot of... Uh 
a lot of people see it in Canada. It's all over, you know, Sportsnet, and I actually get people recognize me every once in a while because it, it's on there a lot, and, and, and people love the coverage. So it's exciting that it's come to YouTube. And of course, Maria, something we haven't a chance to talk to you about is the PSPC, the long postponed, long delayed second Players Championship has now been confirmed. I know, it was very exciting when that news came out on Twitter. I'm pretty sure I retweeted it. I wrote something in response to it. I mean, it has been a long time coming. I, there was so much hype and everything, you know, came to fruition in the Bahamas. And finally, we can do the second, hopefully annual from now on. Hopefully no more pandemics. Yeah, we, we were saying earlier on, I, I'm not sure annual is the right approach with the PSPC. I think it needs to be an occasional event. Maybe four years is a bit too long to wait, but I'm excited that it's finally taking place. I'm thrilled it's going to be back in the Caribbean. I'm so excited to have the PCA back. And more than anything, the fact that it is going to be in a new location. So it's that great blend of a classic event yeah. in somewhere that's different. I'm excited, at least. Thank you, Joe. The last time we've, was we've been playing 2-5 anyway. for a while. The last time can was 2-5 anyway. Play? We've been sitting here for five minutes now, just waiting yeah, right, now. right now. So we are still waiting for some new can players play? to come to the main yeah, stage. I have no TV idea TV. why. Waiting? It is the Sal Desertoise, so maybe people are stargazing on their way over. What is happening? I mean... We've been on the new We've been on right? this land level for a while, 2-5. Yeah. 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 yeah, maybe they didn't notice it on the... Yeah. Got a real blast from the cross at this table, huh? <laughs> well, Fabian seems a little upset about it, which is understandable, but he is one of the shorter stacks, and considering there are pay jumps involved. Sometimes, you know, it's not so bad on a short stack to not be playing hands while people may bust around you, but either way, it looks like they're dealing now. Well, we've got Frankie Magliocco at the table. Why I'm are sorry. you laughing? It's a great name, that's why. Frankie Mags. Griffin, do you remember the last time we had a sit down with Frankie Magliocco? <laughs> Try the so VF. an offer, yeah. <laughs> Couldn't refuse. Okay, Frankie, it's a domination situation and you are way behind here. Can't fall to continue here, though, as the aggressor from the cutoff. You know, you do have a gut shot. Going to force out a lot of folds here from some better hands, too. Ace highs and the like, defending in the big. But that king nine is real strong in this situation. Let's see if Frankie Mags has some bullets in him or if it's going to be a bit of a slowdown. Yeah, Magliocco has some showdown value now turning this yeah. nine, but does he perhaps, okay, he doesn't try to go for maybe a bluff here with that jack in his hand, perhaps trying to represent jack 10, but does not, would be hard to do this after you check turn. I love trying to rep a hand too that no one would ever believe I have. <laughs> oh yeah? How's that been working out for you? Great. I'm always home early. <laughs> it's been a while since I've had to PayPal you any money, Stapes. So, <laughs> it's because I know. didn't give you the option last time. <laughs> <laughs> and I think according to how it went, I appreciate it. Yes. I was looking out for you. <laughs> You're a good friend. I, I, I'll tell you this, Maria. I know that this is a bad thing to admit. I was going to free roll you 10% anyway. Oh, you're so nice. But I had no and good now... news to report on. <laughs> <I know. laughs> so now you have to tell me after the fact. Right. 
just so I know you're an excellent friend. When I don't have to, yeah, exactly. And I don't have to make good at it. <laughs> so Maglioco, not to be pushed around. Counting out more than a call. Yeah, I don't, uh, this is a pretty ill-advised bluff raise, I think, here from Maglioka. It doesn't really make sense, and I think that's probably why Deagle just, like, pretty quickly call. Like, you're just saying you have pocket twos, buddy? You know, you wouldn't have checked back Jack-10. That's what we call a snap. Yeah, and that is, I think, having too many chips and feeling like you've got to do something with it. I couldn't them. hear you. That's, uh, that's, uh, uh, it's mistakes like that you really don't want to find yourself making. I, I couldn't hear you. Ah, okay. That's why I look confused. Okay. Nice hand. I wish I had a good enough reason like that to seem confused at the table, but I don't. <laughs> nice hand there. For Was that a, a hand... Ferenc versus Ferenc. Cool. Is that Frank on Frank crime? Frank on Frank crime. The, the Franco Franco war. <laughs> Franco Hungarian war. <laughs> Hello. 117 players remaining. Everybody in the money now. And it looks like we have got the players we are waiting for. We're in the money. We're in the money. I remember Andrew Hjelm. Back over to Ferenc. In the small blind. You should probably just be putting, no, I guess a little too much to just put Fabian all in. And maybe not with that hand. Jack seven suited. More like Frank the bank, am I right? <laughs> Again. <laughs> and what? Have we got for Fabian King three free flop three cards across the board Queen Jack Jack trips for Deke I win I had the under in my at five minutes of when that quad <laughs> was going to come in from state so five on the turn. <laughs> Maria, I'm, I'm sorry that you're not here. You can't sample any of the fine delicacies that Monaco has to offer, like, I don't know, croissant. See, now that was my thing in my head. How many croissant jokes is he going to make until he makes one that I've already made? Mm. Full house. I set the line at three, so sorry, Hate Joe. I already, I already had a cro croissant you, joke. You got to start with the easy ones and get crazier as you go. Yeah. Not even a question. Yeah, no, I know. I mean, eventually you'll cross that threshold. Oh well. Everybody loves a good thirty euro font. <laughs> oh, I like that bet. Have you guys commented on that already? It's a full house. That's a little about there. Deking is peaking. Uh, yeah, the, the too bad for the Fabian there, but not much oh, you can do with just the king high. Great sweater, though. I hear it's by Hugo Voss. Quas. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, James, save me. <laughs> Anybody out there? <laughs> You can roll on if you want, Maria, because uh, 
A, ro a Rolling Stone gathers no quaffs. <laughs> The truth is, is I only pretend to hate it, guys. I really <laughs> secretly enjoy it. <laughs> I guess the secret's out. Sixteen. Huh. This is a rather wide open from under the gun, but... Well... We'll see how it works out for him. Nick Grico, new to the table, I believe. Maybe trying to establish dominance. It's going to be tough when you've got two players with about 600K plus behind you. Is anyone else having trouble trusting anything Joe is about to say? Always thinking it's going to be a quas <laughs> bun. The thing is, <laughs> when Griffin's in the booth with me, it, it forces me to do them more often because if I don't, he will. It's like... <laughs> When you go to dinner with like a really <laughs> fat friend <laughs> and you do family you style gotta beat him to and the you're punch. like, I just got to get more <laughs> slices of lasagna <laughs> before he can. <laughs> Two pair for Greco. What do you think of it now? For real? Oh, a six. zero from under the gun. Great open. Definitely within range. Greco, gonna put on a little show here. Should be a complete waste since this is gonna go bet fold. Bet really, really, case. really slow fold. Just in case you're not paying attention to the YouTube chat, Leprechaun John says being funnier than Stapes is impossible. Oh, thank you. <laughs> no bluff. No bluff. Thank you. Shows the ace. Yeah, best not show that six, though. Don't want anybody knowing that that's what you're opening. <laughs> <laughs> if you raise, boom, if I'm. Ah, dangerous for you. <laughs> nice hand. Well, everyone seems to be in a pretty good mood still, given how long play has been going today. It must be the thrill of making the money still alive and well. Down to 111 to players. No. Long way to go for the next ladder. You got to make it to 95th place. Luckily, we're playing eight more hours tonight. Are we playing really straight through? Well oh, okay. <laughs> it works out well for me. You know, I'm on LA time. I could be here all night. A lot of people been dreaming of you hearing. Hearing you say that, Maria. Some has now playing chips, which is fun. You, know, you come to a table, you're short stacked, you survive kings against ace nine suited, barely. Get another big hand, ace queen suited. Yeah, I get to set mine a little bit here. Ace 10, I thought that hand was more of a cross up. Yeah, that's, that's tough. I mean, at this stage, you really want to have a double up, cross that off your list. D. Nicola in the small pocket sixes. In Greco. If you're raising A6 under the gun and you're getting these odds with Jack 8, let's go. Four ways to the flop. Oh, wait, no, I am so sorry. We are three betting Jack-8 offsuit from the wow. big one. Hey, this is one in the Maria Ho column. Uh, yes, plus one 
for me. And look at the and hands you know that this is going against here, Maria. This, this might, uh, yeah. might very well work. Yeah, I don't, I don't hate it. see Maglioco looking quite jaded at that three bet, not realizing how, how ironic it is. Get it? Jaded? Jack eight? Anyone? <laughs> All right, fine. <laughs> All right, fine. Well done. If looks could kill. Mm -mm. Nope. Mm -hmm. Nobody remembers that Richard Grieco movie. Shows a jack. Okay. We're going to play the show so one good. game with Nicola Grieco. I like it. I'm into it. Makes it more fun. How else are we going to find out what he had? <laughs> uh, question here. From Bieber Maurus, who asks, it looks really dark down there. Is it just the cameras? No, actually, it's nighttime. Thank you for your question. <laughs> but look at that stage. Shiny, shiny stage. Shiny, shiny trophy. It's very Death Starry. Yeah. On the uh, May the 4th. See the new Obi Wan trailer? Dropped today. I did not. Did you know Darth Vader's going to be in it? Um, I think so. Yeah, I think we all need that. Action over to Frank Deek. I think we're all excited about the return and redemption of Whatever. Hayden Christensen. Mm. There's only one uh, Hayden Christensen in my book, and that's Life as a House. Is that a film he did? Yeah. Now, he had the one where he was a one reporter that was like a bad one liar, but it was so it came cool. off so well because he's kind of has this like a little <laughs> bit of a bad actor thing, and he was like got like award Sorry, stuff for it. Teacher. What, 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 yeah, it's motion it's it's done. Then he had the teleporting movie. Yeah. I kind of like that one. I had a soft spot for that one. Jumper? Yeah. I kind of like Jumper. Oh, that was awful. <laughs> I don't know. I kind of liked it. I don't know why. Jumper describes the audience <laughs> after they see that movie. <laughs> what was it? Sam Jackson is the villain? I, I kind of liked it, too. Yeah, Maria. Let's have a little, uh, we'll have a screening. Jumper here. And a five kid drop. Jumper love fest. Yeah. Oh, we've got a cool. decision. A ruling and, needs to be made. And of course, we'll wear jumpers. Five K chip went astray. I think it's very important that we get that right. For me, it was visible. He wanted to wait. Mr. Wright four two one says Jumper was a good bad movie. He didn't drop. His name's not Mr. Wrong, so that's now canon. Thank you, Mr. Wright. You guys are all spelling Jumper wrong. If you remember, they didn't put the e in it. Did they not? Oh. Wow. There might not have been a U either. I think it was JMPR. <laughs> no, it was I'm not. Pretty sure. No, no, no. They Bridge. teleported out all the vowels. Bridge to Clarity decided to be that guy. Jumper, good book, bad film. Oh, great. Read well, that's never happened before. So it looks like this <laughs> min raise huh? is going to stand. Seems reasonable. Min raise drama, always the most compelling television. And Grieco flatting from the small blind. Un, de toi, as, as, dis. Hmm. Well. Pretty definitive Grieco, flop. <laughs> yeah, and if Grieco continues in any way, he's not going to want to hit his hand. Actually, you know what? Let's all be on our best behavior just in case this goes runner, runner, royal. And we have to put this on YouTube. Mm. So, yeah. Suck in your guts. <laughs> a flop full house. No way this could be beaten. Grieco makes the call of 6,000. The turn. He would need like a king or. Uh, All right. I don't know. You, you know what? He can't make a royal. <laughs> Did you just realize that? <laughs> I didn't know that. Oh, what a waste of time. We can goof around again. No royal possible, guys. Tennis spades in the hand of Diak. If we've learned everything, something about Greco in these three hands we've seen him play, 
tries to find a way to win them. Yeah, so. very unpredictable so far. So Greco was the guy in 2019 that everybody was trying to wait out when they were five-handed. Play, played like a crazy person. Nine hours they played five-handed, right? It's insane. And you know what? Deke very intentionally targeting the ace -X hands here with this slight overbet. And that should give Greco the opportunity to slip away Relatively unscathed, but you can see how much it hurts him deep inside. Yeah. How dare you? He's fighting. I had it. a backdoor royal flush draw on this flop. Yeah, and it probably doesn't help that that jack eight squeeze worked out so well, you know, because you might be feeling yourself after it seems like you were able to get away with one. Oh. <laughs> Inside like of you, there are two wolves. Up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the energy, though. I really do. Um, I Rico's going to be a tough out. And Deke, we've learned you. very quickly on yeah. this feature table. Korea with four Ferraris. Yeah. One very tough player. I fold 9-9. Nine, nine. Wow, good fold. Yeah. Yeah, I good fold. And yeah, even better lie. I saw the hold cards, and I almost stuff. believe it. Yeah. The, the, there was a conviction in that man's eyes that was... I'm He's lied it. before. <laughs> He's, he has lied to people <laughs> straight to their face many times in his life. He's a bad man. It's an oddly specific lie, too. Like, nines? Like, why not just say I had a ten? You know, it's effectively the same kind of value. Uh, it was a good read, though. It'd be pretty hard to have a ten. Hey, maybe he, oh wow, oh Joe, you have been doing this a while. Yeah, I've been doing it in like 20 minutes. <laughs> Dina Cola entering a pot. Jack three suited from the cutoff. I guess it's that time of the night. Balls with ace eight in the small blind. This is a juicy table, I yeah. gotta say, Joe. <laughs> I mean, even the guys that you know are playing 15, 30 bigs are just like, yeah, I got the suited Johnny. And the cutoff. Uh, yeah. Let's uh, let's raise into these maniacs and just see where the chips fall. <laughs> yeah, and uh, king five off. So three premiums here. <laughs> Headed to the flop. And wow, this could <laughs> end in a potential car crash. Top pair for Malioko. Trips for Salzman. And I don't know, Di Nicola hit two red cards. That could I'm, be something. You know what? I'm actually impressed by the check from Di Nicola because <laughs> this is the kind of board that you might want to attack three-handed against passive action. Um, maybe get some folds through, but finding the, 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 the check and now... So the opener, Jack three suited, somehow finds a fold. <laughs> Saul's been trying to figure out the best way to look weak. A nonchalant yes, call. Exactly. Timing that call to make it seem like you don't have a sure decision. You're kind of thinking about it. Good check back. Check, check. I wonder if Dina Cole is mad that he'd have a three and a flush draw now. Okay, I have, I have, I'm going to say 57,000. From who? From Salzman. <laughs> uh, uh, looks like maybe pretty close, Griff. 59,000. You know, oh, 39,000. 30, yeah, no, it wasn't even close at all. Nice it was, it was because he made a bet earlier of 17,000. I just thought maybe he likes 
Seven to seven. Yeah, <laughs> I just threw a, another number at the the bottom of it. I mean, yeah, listen, this is a you know, Lupin. Those wing it bets. Good hand. I mean, certainly you are afraid that Salzman to trip eights here, and you don't have the best kicker with your king. So if they were value betting king here, you're not going to be in great shape either. So. I like the fact that he's taking the time to think about it, especially because when you have so many chips, you know, you've, you've got 630 back. Sometimes you just have the tendency to throw it in there, show me. But yeah, but I think you're right, Maria. I mean, and you think about the, you know, the 10 and the potential for chops. It, it doesn't really enter too much into play here because Salzman called from the small blind and the king x hands that Salzman's going to have are the king jacks and king queens not so much the you know king nine king seven king five kind of hands that you might complete in the big blind especially suited so um you know i think maglia Lioko should try to be able to find a fold here but you know it's tough you do have that king good fall all right oh, hey frankie I like to see that. frankie that's why you're the best of us Gonna snap it up for full. Frankie Mags, he's not your Huckleberry. Not today. Eric Deke's still the chip leader at this table. Frankie Mags, second. Please in stop. Zipping your hoodie, guy. Yeah. I can't. Maria, I'll give you a hundred bucks if you make up lyrics to it next time he does it. <laughs> <laughs> a little freestyle. Griffin, have you been able to play anything out there? Or have you just no, been in the not, booth? Yeah, no, not really. I mean, um, I guess the only opportunity I may have had was when the super high roller kind of ended a bit early. But at that stage, it was kind of, uh, you know, my girlfriend's out here too. So it was our first night here. It wasn't really, I, don't, I didn't even really look at the schedule. Maybe there was a turbo or something. But mostly I'm just only really going to gonna be able to, I mean, I, you mentioned the FOMO. Seeing this tournament, being out here, um, you know, the only other time I've been here. Seeing this feature table in the players. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, obviously I would have loved to have played the, this tournament, but, um, you know, it's... Uh, hey, guys, thanks for flying me out here, by the way. Gig. I'm going to play the yeah, main event now. Yeah, it's a gig. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love being in the booth with these, with these guys and doing this stuff, and sometimes you got to, you know, priorities. You're so grown up, Griffin, <laughs> adulting so hard. Maglioco just coming in with the raise from the small blind with the Quevin getting popped right back by the ace queen of Sonmez. Erkan Sonmez. Pretty small effective sizing here. Um, you know, 21,000, that would have meant it was a raise of 12,000, just two, not even two and a half X from the small, from Frankie Meg's. And Sonmez is just sort of clicking it back there, problem. two and a half X. So <laughs> you show a queen, I show a queen. <laughs> Sonmez up to 300K. It's good for. 59 big blinds. Man, this tournament's deep. It's a deep tournament. Sunmez, do call it a comeback. It's almost 10 x since arriving at this table. Yeah, that's the great thing about, you know, being in these positions is 
It's the nature of the beast. You can go on little runs. We saw the King's Taste 9 for Sonmez. We saw that massive three-way clash between Spraggy and Fabian Quas, rivering that flush. And ever since, just been chipping away, winning a little more chips here and there, and suddenly, you know, you're in the hunt. 16. All right, here we go. 7-3 offsuit. Let's go. Grigo, Grigo, Grigo. Grigo. I mean, certainly you can never put this man on a hand. That's for sure. I was sure. going to say, not likely to be accused of cheating anytime soon, <laughs> I don't think. Paul's been with the Ace of Diamonds. Decided to look at his cards with one eye only. With one eye only. And there is the three bet, AKA re race, forced to fold seven three. Tight is right. That's what I always say. I have heard you say that. So after the break, he's not going to be like 135. He's going to be 90 in it. And then we're done. I think 17. Oh, no, no. They're doing. Well, maybe it's like. 17 level, I think. They said halfway through one of the levels. I'm not sure. So it's halfway through. Bad look like coming in for Steven Salzman. I don't like this one because it's kind of baldest. Not all bald people look alike, Paul. Jean-Luc Picard, just because he's slender and bald. Engage. Wait, that's not Patrick Stewart? That is not Patrick Stewart. I guess I was wrong. Maybe it does look like him. Dina Cola, Dina Cola, and Greco taking turns with some pretty creative opens. Ace eight off for Dina Cola, and it's made its way to the small blind, who is folding. Table captain, Frank Deek. Deek. I mean, Deek. This, this guy kind of looks Deek. like Patrick Antonius, right? <laughs> Pocket oh, fours for D. <laughs> oh, right in the door. Is that another flopped full house? For, was he the one with the pocket tens and it went ace ten? Four in the door, ten? baby. Right in the door. Full house for D. <sighs> Dina Cole with a back door club draw. Gonna feel so good if he makes it. Yeah, is there so bad when D it's a nice showdown. Ola, is there a D nice Ola? And I'll tell you what, Joseph. Dieter Cola continuing, yes. Not the easiest fold facing a check raise if that's the line that Deeks goes with. I mean, you got that ace of clubs. You're thinking, what is this nonsense? This guy's got nearly a million chips. Think he's going to push me around? Huh? On my birthday? In this scenario, yeah, it's, consider it's his birthday. Yeah, okay. yeah, I don't know. Yeah. if it, it could be his birthday. Right. There's a chance. <laughs> Considering that the hand was... <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. Quad alert. Looks quads like we might have uh, a death by quash <laughs> coming up. Quad, yeah. quads, four fours. I mean, the For thing DX. is, is Deke, of course, has more of the 3X type hands, considering he did defend from the big blind. But, of course, he would have had some of those 6-5 type hands that have a straight draw and could potentially be trying to just get D. Nicola to fold on the flop. So you're not going to automatically give Deke such a strong hand. I mean, flop boat to turn quads is not just going to be the hand you're going to put your opponent on. But uh, the waters are pretty murky here. 
because you only have a stack to pot ratio of one and a half to one, and you're just thinking like, am I gonna bust the main event getting stubborn with ace high against this guy? Tell you what, if Spraggy did that, uh, might still be yeah. in. Dina Cola. I think that's the. Will not be pushed around even by quads. I think Maria likes the yeah, best size. Yeah, people have to remember that just because somebody has a big stack doesn't necessarily mean that they're not making huge hands, right? Sometimes the dynamics at the table make you feel like perhaps this person is trying to push you around with a big stack. But as we can see, Deke is running pretty good. But I think this is probably a pretty good river card um, for De Nicola because a lot of those bluff raises were hands like 6-5, 7-5. Um, you know, you do block the nut flush draw, at least, with that ace of clubs. So maybe facing this, what seems like an inevitable all-in, maybe Dinuka is going to be able to find a fold now. Can Might we talk a little bit about... On a King River. Can we talk a little bit about Dinuka's Spra right now? His Spra? Spra. Not a very good Spra. 89K. In a pot of 257,000. Yeah, it's pro. Yes, yes, yes. My point is, Di Nicola has invested more chips in this pot than he currently has remaining in his stack. I mean, I'd rather have half a spra than a full spraggy right now. Yeah, you don't want the spraggy. Yeah, I think it's just kind of a bad time to get stubborn. I think that there's going to be some more spots that Di Nicola could get the chips in that are going to be better than this one. I feel like this run out makes it so that it would be tough for Deke to be bluffing at this point, going for the check raise on the flop and then barreling turn and putting Dean Nicola all in on the river, and it's just not. Ooh, the looks Ooh, he's given him. It feels him. like you want to be a hero. You well, know, you know what but... it is, too. I'm sure, Maria, you can relate to this in a situation like this. You're just thinking, oh, like I have this feeling, this dark fantasy in my head that I'm going to fold this hand, and this guy's just going to show me 9 10 off. You know? He's got all these chips. He can push me around. What? He's saying he had a three the whole time, he check raised with a four. It's just one of those things that you think is happening way more often than it actually is. Certainly depends on the player, but you're mostly right, yeah. Like, we have, I haven't seen a single play like that all day today. Uh, you weren't here for the Spraggy hand. I was not. Deke did this exact thing to Spraggy. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, having said that, though, I don't know if the birthday boy knows that. I don't know if Nicola was watching the stream, that he's, you know, newer to the table. But there was a hand where it was an ace high four card straight board and on the river, Spraggy bet one eighth pot as a blocker bet and got shoved on by <laughs> air. Well, this is the literal definition of painting yourself into a corner. Now your options are, okay, am I gonna walk across the room and get paint everywhere? Or am I just gonna live here? Yeah. Forever. Yeah. Folding, of course, being live here. What will my friends think if I fold and he was bluffing me? I, it looks pretty nice. I, I'd want to stay a while. It's just my, my opinion. Yeah, exactly. Maria, we get it. You have FOMO to the max. <laughs> wow. Dina oh. Cola makes the call. Just quads. And will be eliminated. Hey, look. Death by quad. Do, 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 death by quad. Steak was polarized. We can give him that. Yeah. The rationale, correct. Mm. The outcome, not good. Dina Cola eliminated. Well, at least you have a bad call story for your friends. Wait, the bad beat story is the one you like to tell, right? And there's ways to to tell that one. No, you really can't tell that one any more flatteringly than it happened. Is it better or worse when you finally ha have the courage of your conviction to slam those chips in there and then you get I shown mean, quads? Like, I'm not, I'm yeah. not sure. <laughs> I mean, it's better than, That's it, bravery. than it being like, you know, a river six. I appreciate the comment on Twitch. Uh, Hard Metapod says, what a hero. You're right. 
Herring, Deke, 201 big blinds, big Deke energy right here. And what do we love to do with our heroes? We love to watch them fall. Do, do we? I think. Isn't that like a thing, like a cliche? No. Like something about... <laughs> No, I don't think so. Isn't the thing like when they get to the top, we love to watch them fall? I guess he was never really on the top. He was just drawing dead the whole time. <laughs> Lord Barry is on your side, Griffin says, sometimes heroes fall. Well, happy birthday, at least. <laughs> uh, Did cash for 10,000 euros. Yeah, that's a good birthday. A little more than double the buy-in. Yeah. Oh, sure. Give this man kings against a no madman. <laughs> what? Raising under the gun with eight deuce of hearts. The oh, sure. fudge is going on. That reminds me of that sweet book title for that, that great poker book. Something about the king. She said the kings of the madman. The suicide. Yeah. The, the professor, the banker, and the suicide king. Yeah. I like that book. Do you know who the professor is? Um, is, it, is it Howard? Howard Letterer, yes. Do you know <laughs> who the banker is? Allowed to say, um, Andy Beal. Andy Beal. Yes. Do you know who the suicide king is? Uh, can I, no, don't say it, Maria. I want to guess. Um, is it Phil Ivey? It is not Phil Ivey. Okay. Maria, do you have a guess? I do not have a guess, and I do not know. No Googling, Maria. I'm not Googling. <laughs> no <laughs> RTA, <am> Maria. <laughs> yeah, I can tell you got the Google, no. the eyes. Over there. Greco <laughs> 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 frustratingly forced to fold 8-2 suited. Okay, so who's the suicide king? Maybe Twitch will know. I haven't seen it on Twitch yet. It is not someone just said it, Someone just said it's no, Greco. No. <laughs> <laughs> it could be Greco. <laughs> I also have a Dean Nicola here. Someone wrote the first name, Zamper, on Twitch. Is it Viffer? It is not Viffer. Okay. Oh, the first name is there on Twitch somewhere. It is not Gus, Gus Hansen. It's not Gus. It is not Brunson. Zamper, you are correct. Ted Forrest. Ooh, wow. Why do they call him the Suicide King? I've never heard that in relation to, like, as a nickname or in reference to Ted. Ted Forrest was this, at the time, was a prolific prop better. I know he's unassuming and you wouldn't suspect it, but he had a reputation for... Like, he learned how to do a standing backflip so that he could prop bet people that he could do a backflip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I rec if you haven't read it, I recommend you check it out, Maria. It's, it's, a, it's a good little read. It's a cool story. Ted Forrest was actually yeah. the first person I ever interviewed it's my, it's on a podcast. One of my favorite poker sort of storybooks. Storybooks. Son Mez. Makes a 12K with Ace King in the hijack. 10 9 suited, you're going, hmm. Yeah, certainly not a bad hand if you feel like you've got some fold equity with oh. your stack, but does end up getting away from it. Good dodge, good dodge. 7 4 for Deke. Folds the button. Make some extra effort to get around all those chips. And Di Nicola. Is there a hand Excuse that me, Greco, Greco folds? Yeah, Greco last act. And oh. nope, turns out there isn't. Simple Jack. So referring to Jack Dews, not to, not to Greco, to be clear. Yes. Is this his first name, Jack? Do you think that this flop will m -m 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 make him happy? <laughs> 10, 8, 5, two diamonds. I'll call that a diamond <laughs> draw for Greco. <laughs> He's got an overcard to the board. He's got some backdoor straight possibilities. And like you said, that mighty deuce of diamonds. It's, it's a lot of equity, you know, a lot, a lot going on here. 
I'm going to wager that Greco finds a way to win this pot. Whether it's check raising on the flop or calling the flop and leading the turn. You know, Greco is pissed all the time. I can't believe some of the laydowns he's had to make. 7-3, 8-2. <laughs> yeah, yeah. like, hey, the man's reaching for chips, okay? Listen, I don't, I don't write these scripts, okay? This is a I semi bluff. Just... This is a straight draw with the jack <laughs> and a diamond draw with the deuce. I don't read the scripts in advance. I don't write them. <laughs> but you just, you, you feel the flow, man. Do you agree with XCOM and uh, you should never go full Greco? <laughs> Listen, this man has a reputation to live up to from, what, 2019? When did he make a deep run in this? 2019, yeah. Pretty recent. Yeah. About as recent as it gets. Yeah. So let the man do work. So I don't, I, I obviously heard what you were saying about that particular event, Joe, but the way it was described, it was almost as if there were four other players. <laughs> it was the Diamonds. Shows uh, one. Listen, and hey, listen. <laughs> I have three diamonds. What do you expect? Flash <laughs> draw, no? I have a flash draw. Yeah. If you bet, I equal. Oh, now another lie. It's like it's part of his yeah, persona. Yeah. He needs to tell at least well, one lie. He made a deal with a poker devil once. <laughs> Anytime he talks post hand, he needs to make at least one lie. The one before, he said he had pocket nines. Nothing. With conviction, but I'll tell you. And now he says... If you were to have raised again, I would have called. I Big believe fan. Pinocchio was an Italian character. <laughs> I mean, listen, I'll tell you what. He, he's really, he looks real comfortable with this behavior, but I, I like to think also that this can be one. That's kind of an interesting thing about poker is that it gives you the opportunity to just be a bold faced liar for a few yeah, hours. Yeah, it's you know, fun. Like, he could be nothing like this in real life. And it's just like such a, you know, you feel like a kid again. You he's just, just he's a stare priest. A guy. <laughs> <laughs> you just stare a guy right in the face and be like, yeah, I mean, if you re raised again there, I would have, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm all in, buddy. Pocket eights for Cernmez. King Jack for Big Deke yeah. Energy. <laughs> 200 big blinds to start the hand. Yeah, and he really hasn't even gotten out of line with his stack. In terms of his hand selection and how he's played post, it, it, he really hasn't had to do much in the way of necessarily taking advantage or bullying people with that big ship stack. It's really been somewhat straightforward, a little bit of run good not overpacing himself. I like that Greco looked down at ace-10 like he was just, whoa, what am I supposed to do with this? I guess I'll call. Like, <laughs> <laughs> feel, this feels too good to re-raise. Salzman going to take some pot odds, calling with Jack-5 suited. And away we go. King-5 tray, pair of fives for Salzman. But eight still good for Cernmez, except no. yes, Joe. <laughs> Top pair for Deke. There you go. I know sometimes when I they think put it's just the... safe to assume <laughs> that Deke always has the best hand yeah. at any point so far. Yeah, good well, flop for Deke. What we've <laughs> what we've learned today, we've learned a lot today. But if there's two things we've learned. It's that Deke will make the best hand, and Greco will pretend to have the best hand, <laughs> and we'll see where all the chips fly. And Salzman with the ill-advised, let's just see where I'm at here, lead from the big blind. Yeah. Um, so the, not really a fan of this lead, especially against three other opponents. Everybody knows if you hit this flop huge that you're gonna you're gonna go for a check raise. I mean, come on. Cernmez is going to raise. 
Yeah, and you know what? This lead is actually costing Sonmez more chips because had it just been checked to him like it really should have been, you know, might have fired out a smallish bet, might have just checked and maybe called one bet, but now having to put out raising chips. And um, I don't think Deke is going anywhere. Yeah, probably not going to give Salzman credit for a really strong hand with that lead. So isn't that worried about his hand? And when we're talking about Sonmez's hand, of course, you know, players that are going to attack that lead doesn't necessarily have to have a King X type hand beat. But you know what? It's really oh, tough wow. to continue. I mean, it's easy to see when we're looking at the hands, but listen, I'm so Son glad that happened Son because Mez, I was like, listen, I, I would probably muck that yeah, yeah, yeah. a good Son Mez percentage has been of the time. Pretty tight, pretty straightforward. And, you know, you're not really worried about Salzman so much, but Sonmez is electing to take a raising strategy there, representing much better hands than the King Jack. Not necessarily, uh, well, let's see where I am with Maybe. the pair under Maybe. King. <clears throat> Sonmez. Profiting big time off of the donk lead from Salzman. And a rare non win for Farron Deke. This has been a fun table. Wiley. Yeah. <laughs> Very wily. And it's also going to take a Wiley. We will be here for quite a while still. Mm -hmm. All right, Greco, King Jack suited. That's a hand. Malioko, Jack seven suited, dominated. Excuse me, not suited. Unsuited, off suit, two suits. Six, six tray. One spade. Six, six tray, what's it gonna be? It's going to be a C as in continuation. 15 is the bet from Greco. Half pot C bet using all small denomination chips. Uh, Zipper man's back. Get it. Get it. Get <laughs> the chip ips. Filthy Silver gets in touch and say, wow, what a broadcast. I slept a full night and wake up and you're still going. Must be so hard to talk for that long, let alone make it interesting. The second Griffin makes it interesting, I will let you know. The key is when we run out of things to say, we just read the longest comment possible <laughs> <Correct>. on Twitch. <laughs> Don't give that away. <laughs> I shouldn't have done that, right? Uh, it's in the show notes, too. And we get another... One card exposed one, one. from Greco. I do want to know more about Nicola Greco, so who he is in real life. Just that was what happened just then, yeah. Mm -hmm. 94th minute, I think. It's, it's extra time, not Me even too. Time, I want to find out. Are you a liar in real life? Yeah, yeah, I didn't know if you meant like. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Two, two zero? No, no, it was 2-1 after regular time, so it went into overtime, and now Real scored a penalty. Oh, uh, I told you, 10-3. to not really qualify. Getting yeah. some... Uh, can't, can't catch a break. Can soccer <laughs> updates <laughs> from Fabian over there. Uh, sounds like the winning <laughs> goal was <laughs> sent in on a Quas <laughs> header. Oh. Did it hit the Quas bar? <laughs> <laughs> yes, but then it went in. They're going all the way to the World Cup. <laughs> oh, 
gentlemen. Jonina asks, this is a special table or is in the tournament among what? I'm so sorry, I should have read that whole thing before I got to the end. I have no idea what you're asking. Quick call from Greco. Quas all in. Greco beating him in the pot. Couple of Ochos. I know who you guys are rooting for just because you guys want to be able to make your jokes for a little while longer. <laughs> I mean, in fairness, we, we got, we're getting plenty of material Ooh. from Greco too. Certain <laughs> as waking up with the ace quas. <laughs> Has Fabian dominated? More than 300, yeah. Greco can do some damage. Does have Cernmez, excuse me, Cernmez has Greco covered, but to lose a flip to pocket eights here would be devastating. But would force a th fold, I think, from this particular hand from Greco. Um, so Cernmez sitting there, doesn't want to soon mess this up. Quick, Griffin, what's a five-letter word for German poker player? Um, Quas? Yeah. Quasford puzzle. Oh. <laughs> oh, Get them all boy. in, guys, right now, because... <laughs> Fabian's in bad shape. He's not going to be here for very much longer. We might get a fold from the ace queen, though. Which we did. Ace queen oh. does it's fold. It's a clean flip. We will be flipping ace nine versus eights. One ace folded. Like hot quas buns versus a quas salad. <laughs> One of these two hands has a slight mathematical advantage. And both are delicious. Rico, very upset he can no longer bluff in this hand. Yeah, realizing with the hands turned up, not going to find a chance really to lie to his opponent. <laughs> <laughs> to his face. <laughs> what lie will I make? I can't. The flop. There's the queen. You know what? I think Rico does have an opportunity, though, if they start talking. Him and Stone Meds. If Stone Meds says, would you have called my all in? I think he would have just said yes. <laughs> Cernmez, what a flop top pair, but it's a nine oh. on the turn. Quas, the big favorite to survive. <laughs> oh, he finally figures it out. I wouldn't mind seeing Greco on tilt, though. That could be fun. Yeah. Hey. River is another queen. All those cues out there. Yeah, and uh, Fabian Quas with the ace queen folded, spinning. Double up for Nicola Greco. Thank you, Statrick. Who said, since you want to know more about Greco. He's the one when you are three. You only win the one, the one when you are three. Greco is the former president of an Italian third division football team. Can we get a... a Someone on the floor, calm down, quass a little bit here. <laughs> this level of excitement, I mean, listen, we got to start a new hand here, buddy. You know, keep it together. Now, Fabian keep your voice down. Has been enduring these jokes for me for like a decade now. And I ran into him once, <laughs> once in London. I was like, hey, man, I hope it's cool. I hope everything's. And he was like, yeah, yeah no problem. But he's very soft spoken. He's like, I'll just so you're not pronounced Kavos. <laughs> 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 and I was like, yeah, okay, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, yeah, listen, I was just doing I was just doing you a courtesy. I didn't actually didn't actually matter if you, you didn't like it. <laughs> if anybody ever said that they didn't like it, I would stop doing it, but I would talk so badly about them behind closed doors. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'd be like, you don't see this guy here? This guy? Yeah. Pocket fives for Diak. Fabian, Jack of Spades, giving it a think. Eight, 
now has calling chips. He's been working all day. And uh, flatting and under the gun, under the gun plus one. This is going to be a pretty strong hand from Kavos, no? Grieco, come on. Four high. Tilt. <laughs> Tilt. Where you called it. <laughs> Total of seven. Yeah, I think Kloss at minimum should have some Broadway suited type hand here to call with. Yeah, I think, you know, Kwas, the sort of the bottom, I think, of his range here would be something like. Ace jack? A suit, yeah, ace jack off, a suited, you know, queen jack, king jack kind of hand. Even ace jack suited, I think, would just play as a flat here. Um, so this particular board does flop quite well for Fabian. Oh, Greco. 17. 17. He can't help himself. I mean, how Make rich is Italian soccer teams that a third division team president can be splashing around in a 5K? Not a care in the world. I will say Jack's certainly also in the range for Fabian here. Just a flat with Jack's? Yeah, keeping the weaker hand that might be raising an early position okay. in Deke. Yeah. And I think would, would be very willing to continue with a call against Grieco here, given what he's seen from, from, from the player. Some body language there from Fabian. Settling in, shifting, preparing for the turn which is the deuce of diamonds. Welcome, by the way, all you Fint heads. Fint in hand with the viewer dump. And Grieco picks up a draw now. Bets, oh, wow. That's 2,000? Not sure that's legal at this point. I know. Oh, 50,000. Yes. <laughs> I mean, don't, don't let the guy turn some equity. He's just going to keep firing. And it would be nice to know the full holdings of Fabian Quas, but based on the range we've broken down, the one hand that I think will be difficult to continue with is two jacks. But King Jack's certainly not going anywhere. And if I know anything of Fabian, not going to fold Ace Jack either. Not to this point, opponent. Not here. Not this day. Well, I like the twist of only knowing one of these cards. All right. Well, that narrows it down quite a bit, I think, as Fabian is making this call. Boss with just 56 left behind. Spra. I mean, in Goes fairness, check, Fabian check. is good enough to be calling twice here with Jax as well, yeah. knowing how thin Greco is representing. It is the ace jack of spades. And two big pots in a row for Fabian Kvoss. From like 12 big wines to 47. That's nice. What a miracle. Fabian, very methodical. Plays almost like a computer. Operating system, MS Quas. Nice. Pocket sevens now for Kvoss. Lawrence, Kvoss did not have Jack-Jack. He had Ace-Jack. Raising under the gun now with 7-7. Seven, seven. Oh, and the true Jordy rating us with a massive viewer dump also. The one true Jordy to rule them all. 
Action on Parent Deke. He's gonna defend 9-7 off in the big blind. And flops the oh, joint. Wow. You know, that, that run good is still alive and well, even though Deke took a couple hands off. This is more hands than I've made total well, I, I was in my life. I was going to say, you know, it's jack 10, 8, 9, 7. It's, it's not really the joint. The joint would have been queen 9. 9, 7 is more like a spliff. Okay. Connor Gunn Plus, asks... Why didn't he bluff River also put them all in? Any opinion on that, commentators? No. Thank you for your question. Go ahead, Maria. Klaus is just deciding. Looks like he made the decision to turn this hand into a bluff. Of course, could have the nuts here with Ace-King while being in his range. But just really trying to get, you know, these one pair hands, like the Jack X, perhaps the 10 X, those type of hands to fold. That and a call to the river. Not going to deke this guy out with a straight. Repeat eight. A seven. A not good. Not going to do it. Joe Robot Food asked, is Timex in this tourney? Ugh. This is so 2016. Timex could have afforded to put every single person in this tournament. <laughs> it was only 5.2 million total in the prize pool. Yeah. Deke checks. Quas is going to take the check back. And sees that the spliff was flopped. <laughs> Well, we don't normally do interviews with 124th place finishers. But in this case, we're going to make an exception. Please enjoy the glorious tracksuit. Yeah, it's nice to be uh, traveling again. It's nice to be here in Monte Carlo. I think the last time I was here was 2019 or 2018, something like that. So it's been a long time and sort of pulling into the hotel and see people in the lobby, uh, you know, old regulars and uh, poker stars people and daf uh, staff and dealers and things like that. It's, uh, it's really great to be back in Monte Carlo, yeah. I don't think much has changed really from the, since the last time I was here. I mean, maybe the, there seems to be a little bit more of a, a pep in everybody's step just because I think everybody, there's pent up demand to, to get out here and be playing EPTs again. So I think poker players are, I don't want to curse this, but they seem happier. We all seem a little bit happier to be out here playing, so, so that's nice. Yeah, it's my first first main event I've played. Obviously, I've been to EBT events before, but I've been doing commentary and things like that. First main event I got to play, so um, I was happy to make the money. It was a little bit of a difficult bubble, frustrating bubble when you have a stack that can't really do too much uh, and covered and sort of went on for a little bit longer than I, I might have hoped, but um, feels good to be in the money, same as ever. If you don't make that deep run final table, you're always going to be a little bit disappointed, but we go again. Like I say, lots more still to play, so we'll, we'll look to reinvest. Hey, next time Spraggy does an interview in a green, a hideous green jumpsuit, could you guys maybe project a nicer shirt onto him <laughs> as long as he's wearing green? If anyone is coming up. We have the technology. Yeah. So. Let's use it, guys. If anyone is dropping in that spot like that, I feel so. I would have, Marin would have Opria says, one of the commentator here is very annoying. Guess which one? I don't have a guess, I guess but one of the it. YouTube chatters is about to get banned. <laughs> guess which one? Whoa, big hand happening already. Grieco opening 9-6 suited, getting three bet by Maglioco. Mm -hmm. And how much that pained that man. Another frustrating 
tight lay down from Nick Logrico. Frankie Mags, there he is. He only orders mags when he's out. Only Magnum bottles. And Magnum you know what. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Ice cream bars. I was th I was thinking just like mag like Reader Digest magazines. <laughs> Salzman folding queen five. Jack 10 for Malioko. Arcane 231 remarks, even Finton wouldn't wear that track top. I would not put it past him. Especially now it's braggy stink all over it. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't be surprised if he bored it from Finton. Action on table captain, Big Deke Energy. See how, do you see how he takes the chips? He's got him two stacks of chips with one hand. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's BDE. That's boss. Yeah. And as that's Quas. As opposed to Quas. <laughs> Deke three betting with the Ace of Diamonds and a mystery card. Quas with nines. Really, ooh, baby, two moves here for welcome the to Fabian one. Jamrock, it's an all in there, it's a fold. It's about 40 big blinds, just under 38. Deke with the snap call, that looks like ace, king, or aces. What's it gonna be? And it's maybe it's kings. No, we saw the ace dog. Oh, we were, oh he was <laughs> he was lampooning me, guys. He smiled. He didn't see it. Uh, Joe was smiling. Pocket aces for Dieck. Aces. Nines for Kavos. The Gretzkys. The great one. There's a reason why. Why are they all saying oh, it could could be Quaz? Oh, quads. Quads. There's a reason why it's called the Stars Nuts to the flop. King, King four United six. Five, Closest six, we're gonna get is an upside down nine. Right. Amazing. At the flip. Nice. But what is the EPT nuts? Let's find oh, out right. if it's also nine nine. Nine nine. <laughs> Your game. Okay. Okay. Come back. <laughs> <laughs> No more. Ten jack. Ten jack. Ten no jack. nine. <laughs> which means nine. <laughs> Quas. The German version. Fabian Foss eliminated around 101st place, 10,410 euros. Griffin, are you aware it's not just poker action here in Monte Carlo? Um. No, I didn't know that. Tell me more. <laughs> it's a lot of fun and games. Not just if you're crushing the tournament with 250 big blinds with 100 players left. There's fun stuff to do at nighttime. I like nighttime, Joe. It was actually really cool. We had a, a party here the other night, the players' party. Everyone had a blast, and we gave away a special prize. I'm going to show you guys something having to do with it just a little bit. Come on, guys. We'll, we'll tease there. Joe just winked when he said that. We'll tease there. He's got something for us. Little tease. Yeah. You were late to the party. Yeah, very late to the party. So you're going to get to see what you Super missed. Super fashionable. Um, unfortunately, Fabian Quas not going to be there for an interview. Didn't want to field any questions. Action on Farrank Deke with his big Deke energy. And we're pretty sure he is overall chip leader at this point with 1.2 million, 250 big blinds. I've top never Deke. heard of such He's a thing. He's top Deke. 
He's HDIC, head deke in charge. Rico with a real hand this time. Maglioco, we got one of the cards. It's a 10 of clubs. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Rico flops a jack, turns a jack. I guess the best Maglioco can have right now is a straight draw. Maybe a very costly trips himself. Deuce on the river. This 10's gonna be no good regardless. And whatever you have, Mags, it better be 10s if you're willing to call because you block the straight draws, my friend. Don't be getting crazy with ace 10 high calls because you don't believe the Greek. Uh oh. Get him to the Greek. Uh oh. Lioko, I mean, look, can you blame him? It's Greco. But I he's know you don't believe in sometimes. blockers. But you have a 10 in your hand. You're blocking the straight draws, Joe. Sometimes you're blocking the straight draws. Sometimes Greco actually has it this time, being one of those times. All right, I know I teased you a few seconds ago, Griffin. Really cool players party here the other night. I got to go and I get to give away a really cool prize. It's a little bit of a cluster F, the way it all went down. Please enjoy the players party marble race. Well, if it's me, you're gonna enjoy it. to run the marble race. Red speed pass on the line. They're away. Bit of a traffic jam on the first turn. 18 ahead of 24 right now. 18 crosses the line. 18 is the winner. There it is, number 18 right behind us. Get on. Action here on Asan Umarov, the online qualifier. He folds. Chip leader Jimmy Guerrero is out. Pierre Kalamusa, former contestant on the French reality show Maison du Bluff. Zut alors. He's got Queen Jack of Hearts. Hold on. And he's going with it. Zut alors. Jan Bendik. Cool. Has ace king again? What? You've got to be kidding me. So Kalamusa at risk with close to 40% equity. Pierre's buddy is Olivier and Aubin. He's also being railed by a French megastar, Patrick Bruel. You know who loves Patrick Bruel? Your mom. She actually really does. Kalamusa looking to hit this flop. And he does. That gives him 14 outs. Who needs reality TV when you've got the drama of the EPT? 5-6, okay? Okay. Running 5-6 would chop it. Five on the turn. <laughs> I don't care, Pierre. I am from France. 4-7. Four, four, so Kalamusa wins outright with a queen, jack, or heart, and they split it if a six hits the river. It's a six! Yeah, five, six. Wow, it's all in, told you. I can uh, call the cards. It's a chop pot. And you know what they say? Yeah. Everyone loves a chop pot! Might be the last one of season 12. Kalamusa in the cutoff has kings. I'm starting to think maybe he can call cards. Hey, could you call for a Mother's Day card? I think it's too late for me to go out and get one. Kalamusa. Raises to 240,000. Adrian Alain folds. Jan Bendix in the small blind with a six of diamonds. Cool. Round to Asan Umarov in the big blind. I think it's my turn. 
There is only one hand you want here, my friend. And it's not 7-8 offsuit. They're both red? Well, he is getting ridiculous pot odds, but my guess is that the 10 euro qualifier isn't going to be quite as experienced post-flop mm -hmm. as the French grinder and the former EPT player of the year. Well, he decides to call, and we're going three-way to the flop. Hey, maybe Patrick Bruel will sing my mom something for Mother's Day. Kalamusa, the favorite here. The flop. Jack 6-6 six, six, trips for Bendik. Oh, gross. King's no good. Check. Action check to the pre-flop aggressor. Kalamusa continuing for 300,000. Of course he's going to bet. He's going to have the best hand a ridiculous amount of the time. Bendik calls. Umarov folds. Heads up to the turn. It's a five, meaning Bendik is a 95% favorite. And it looks like he's going to lead. Maybe he doesn't like that spade. One third pot, half a million. Could have been a little bigger. Hold in. Kalamusa shoves. Cool. Nice work inducing. Kalamusa at risk and drawing to just two outs. King. Unless it is a king on the river, he is out in fifth place. Poor guy probably expected to be up against a flush draw most of the time. All right. Bad flop, I guess. Nobody expects Yen Ben Dix, Yen Ben trips. Flops or diamond. The river. It's a king! Hit him with the hind! I don't know how or why new phone who dis. That's why I'm the best, huh? <laughs> Yan is not amused. Five-handed at the main event final table. Blind still 60,000, with a 20,000 ante. Now's when the real poker starts. Kalamusa folds. His fellow countryman, Adrian Alan, is going to get frisky and raise it up with 9-6 of diamonds. Sure, why not? Round to the blinds. Asan Umarov folds in the small. Jimmy Guerrero in the big. Ace Queen. Jimmy likes his hand. Jimmy thinks we should play for a bigger pot. Jimmy's gonna three bet. The chip leader re raises to 850,000. What's the land doing? Four bet alert. He has looked at his cards. Or actually, I don't hate this move. His hand isn't strong enough to call, but his stack is strong enough to four bet. 1,800,000. Jimmy's girlfriend T played this event. She finished 14th. Quite the sweat now. Guerrero out of position. He calls. We're going to the flop. Well, Jimmy has flopped a gut shot and a flush draw. He is almost a nine to one favorite here. That was a hell of a flop for Ace Queen with the Queen of Hearts. He's checked it to Alan, who had the pre flop betting lead. He continues for 1.5 million. And that is a terrible flop for 9 6 of diamonds. Guerrero calls the C bet. And I think 6-9 should just give it up here. Most of the time, he's going to have less equity than Hillside Property in Pompeii. Four clubs on the turn, pairing the board. Alan has less than a pot size bet behind. Guerrero still playing in flow. Checks it a second time. Alan checks behind. So for his sake, that is the white flag being waved. A third four hits the river. Guerrero checks a third time. Brilliant. And Adrian Alan moves all in a huge bluff. Now, this is the perfect run out to get folds, but I have no idea what Alan is repping. The two biggest stacks at the table go to battle, and then this happens. 
Only six combo, yeah. Kings or ICs, yeah. Got broke here. Jimmy's got the right idea. There aren't a lot of combos of aces and kings out there. <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah, wow. Unfortunately, he is not beating ace king as a bluff. Tough spot for him, even tougher for that coffee stir. Sorry. If he finds a call here, a land's out. Show me if I fall. Maybe. Huh? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, I don't know. Time has been called. They'll put Jimmy Guerrero on a 60 second countdown. My French is a little rusty, but I'm pretty sure he's complimenting his opponent's play. He knows this is a bluff most of the time. It's either that or a slow played monster every once in a while. Which is it, Jimmy? Sure, bluff. Sure. <laughs> Very nice bluff. Ça veut quoi? J'ai pas les couilles de payer, putain. J'ai un dame. Ça veut? Ouais, je te jure. Vraiment? Ouais. He shows it. Ouais, je sais, il bluff. Aïe! Je sais, il bluff. J'ai un dame. Ouais, je sais. Guerrero with aces. Jimmy's getting rockets. Hey, remember that guy with the toothpick from Uncle Buck? <laughs> Classic. So this is a raise from the button to 350,000. The land is folded. Action on Bendik in the big blind. 350. He's got King Seven of Hearts. Sure, why not? He calls. Ace, ace. King, seven. Bendik flops two pair. Oh man, this is what I like to call a fang. And the A-N-G stands for ace is no good. Action's been checked to the pre-flop aggressor. Guerrero set to continue. It looks like a great flop for aces. 375,000. I say the move here is to just call. I don't think this is going to be a call. Yeah, yeah, and Bendik has made it pretty clear that he marches to the beat of a different drummer boy. He check raises to 925k. I mean, clearly that's what attracted Angelica to him in the first place. How's Guerrero going to respond? He can get in real trouble here if he thinks Bendik's going crazy with just a king. Counting out a re-race. That's 1.85 million. All in. Like for Bendix shoves and Guerrero snap calls. Wow, I am surprised to see Aces get it in there so happily. Yeah, nice in. Give me a four. Nice in. I got to. A quarter of the time, he's going to catch up. Team Bendek hoping that kings and sevens hold here. A turn cards to deuce, additional outs for Guerrero. Deuce or four? Or an ace. Yeah. 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 
The river card is a queen. Nice hand. <laughs> nice hand. Bendik doubles up. A land calls on the button in the small blind with eight. Bendik raises from the big blind with Queen Jack. A land shoves. Very cool. And Bendik calls her off to the races already. He said he was a gambler, and the story checks out. That is one way to take the edge from a GTO player. Nah. This is for the title, everybody. Uh, flip. At least in poker, your physique has got nothing to do with how well you flip. The flop is crunchy. All clubs. If the flop's the first hurdle, Alain just caught a toe. Lots of additional outs for Bendik. The turn card. Is another club. That'll do it. Wow. Bendik doubles up with a flush. Play on, players. Well, Jan has narrowed the gap between them substantially. Adrian Alain, first to act. Pocket eights. Here we go again. He raises to 525,000. We may be going again. Bendix got tens. This isn't a flip. Here comes the re-race. Bendix makes it 1.65 million. No, oh, now that he's got chips, he's not all jam happy. Well, they are pretty deep. It doesn't have to go all in pre-flop. Alan just calls, and he'll get to play the flop in position. And he flops a set! Maybe, just maybe, the ace will save Bendek from getting stacked here. I don't know, the ace might be a scare card, but I'm pretty sure Bendek's fear receptors went out with popcorn ceilings. He's continued the flop for 1.6 million. Alan calls, will that slow Bendek down? Nothing has slowed him down thus far. The turn card is a 10. That's ball game. A cooler developing here, set over set. Now Bendik finally slows down. Bendik has checked it. Alan is betting. 1.5 million, a small bet into a huge pot. Really small. How much you play more? Is this a terrible Hollywood or just a plain old D gaff? Then help. I am leaning toward the former. Alain breathing heavy. I think it's because he expects to have the best hand pretty much always. Bendik loading up for a check raise. He makes it 4.25 million. Everything in his hand has been standard up until this point. Against another player, Alain may not be loving this, but Bendik plays everything super fast, even two pair hands. Just a call from Alain, and he's going to need those quads again. Oh man, I didn't even think of that. Nobody gets quads twice. Complete brick on the river. All in. Bendix shoves. A land calls and it's over. Let's everybody take a second to let this sink in. The grand final champion has been crowned. Jan Bendix has won the EPT 12 grand yes. final. Yes. And France cannot believe it. <laughs> EPT 9 player of the year. Three-time main event finalist, and on his third occasion, he is a winner.
Fast forward to 2022 and we are back in Monaco for the Pokestars EPT presented by Monte Carlo Casino and somehow it is still day two. There is still another 45 minutes to be played, the first half of level 17 and then we will be able to bag and tag and come back tomorrow for day three. These are the players at our feature table. Ferenc Dijk, the current tournament chip leader with 1.25 million, a 209 big blind stack. Oleg Basayev is in the danger zone. Danger zone! With just five bigs. I am James Hartigan. Here's Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. Nick Walsh in the house as well. We're back. Let's finish this day. And these are the overall chip leaders. Feraldo is in the top five. Let's go. Cool. Anna Marquez, a top 10 stack. Also double, let's go. You know, I don't want to say Monaco's expensive, but the baseball diamonds are made by De Beers. <laughs> Forgot to say that one out loud today. Yeah, I read it earlier. I'm pleased to confirm that Maria Ho is still with us. Hello, Maria. Hello there. Nearly done for the day. So, 99 players remaining as we come back from the final break of the day. And at this point, I have to get everyone to make their bold predictions. How many will make it to the end of this 45-minute session? What are we going to come back with tomorrow, Joe? I'm thinking, sorry, I'm not, I'm not checked out yet. <laughs> Nicholas, would you like 81. to guess? Uh, 99 remain in the field. Forgot to ask, like. Yes, I know, Nick. Yeah. So you're basically saying there'll be no eliminations this level so. and we'll end the day with 99. I think at this stage, everyone's going to rock up. Absolutely no eliminations from any of the tables. No, what's my guess? What's my proper guess? Um, I'm going to say, having walked around the field for a little while there, in real time. Okay, my I might change my mind given the fact that home is now all in. <laughs> just 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 give me a bloody number, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for uh, 89. 89. Maria, you're up next. Joe's gone for 81. Nick's gone for 89. Okay. I regret it. I forgot we're only playing half a level. Anyway. Yeah, I'm gonna go with 93. Whew. Okay, and I'm going to split the difference, and I'm going to go for 90. This isn't that many big blinds to call. <sighs> so this is Basayev all in with his I need one double. Well, one. super short stack. <laughs> he does have the best hand, too. Only very marginally, you prefer to have queen jack with not a heart if you wanted to pick that specific combo. I haven't seen an 8, 9, 10 flop for a while. <laughs> Love that. Pretty specific. All right, representing the UK. Not one, huh. right? That doesn't look like a straight. To air is Hulman. Very nice. I like that a lot. Did anyone fall bases? No? Don't ask for outs when you don't need to improve. It's kind of a rule here. Yeah. Like not eating all the fully loaded nachos. And ace high holds, so that is going to be a double up for Basayev, and that is going to leave Andrew Hume super short. In fact, Hume is going to have five big blinds, finds himself in the situation that Basayev was before that double up. Yeah, the absolute flip-flop. Just trading places at this table in terms of stack, according to big blind. Jeffrey asks, when was this event? 
today, Jeffrey. <laughs> Thank you for your question. Claude writing in to call Andrew Hume a Walmart, Walmart Spraggy, which I have to say is a little rude because Spraggy is Walmart Spraggy. What's the next step down from Walmart? Wish, for sure. Or uh, what's the other one? That we you don't guys, have that Primark, in the States, do we? Primark Spraggy. Maybe AliExpress. AliExpress Spraggy. <laughs> <laughs> Just one more hand after this one before he gets eaten up by the big blind and the big blind Annie. So not a lot of choice. Nope. One more. One, one more. more. Mean Jack for Dick. Rounds the blinds. Stefan Saltzman. But a distinguished gentleman from Switzerland. King 10. You like the Swiss flag, Nick? I like it a lot. It's a big plus. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Salzman. He is literally the salt man. Frankie. Faults. Flop is Queen Jack five. So top two for Deke Saltzman with the open ended straight draw. And of course, the backdoor diamond draw with the King of Diamonds, too, not to be overlooked in these sorts of situations. Plenty of equity for Saltzman, but let's not ignore the fact that Deke has hit so many flops so <laughs> hard. Ooh. Yeah, now facing this lead from Salzman definitely could consider fast playing or just calling. Salzman did this once before and got completely punked. Yeah, I think when we see leads in these kinds of situations, it's going to be quite often a draw. So interesting that the Queen Jack just went for the flat. I don't know if you agree, Maria, but let's say Salzman continued to lead the turn. Do you, do you think maybe you'd, you'd start putting in some raises on the turn here? Yeah, I think if you didn't raise the flop, then definitely now is the time. But I am a little surprised that Deke didn't just elect to put in a small raise on the flop, yeah. considering most of the hands that are going to lead into him at that point will continue against a raise. Yeah, I mean, or even it's going to happen a lot less because of the blocker effect. But even if they're leading with, you know, a jack or a queen, still kind of combos that might call a small raise. And then, of course, the decision tree changes thereafter. Having more chips in the middle, SPR changes, gets really easy to get the money in when uh, Salzman was starting with something like 33 bigs at the start of this hand. So 53K. Yeah, it's a third of Salzman's remaining stack, so definitely a decision point of how far do you want to take this draw. Yeah, that is an enticing, an enticing size for this draw. And if you think maybe Salzman could perhaps call and then just shift the river with any diamond, you know, because he does have that very, very prominent blocker. I mean, that is a consideration that, that he needs to take into account, right? It's not, you could play this hand in a way where you think, I'm going to call, hopefully I'll make a straight. If I don't make my straight, but I hit a diamond, I'll just turn my hand into a bluff and try and rep the flush, like super hard, you know? But it looks like he's electing to lay it down instead. Fair play. More chips for Big Deke Energy. Even with the blinds change. 
215 big blinds. Ridiculous, over 1.3 million. Number one on the leaderboard right now with 97 players remaining. So two KOs since we came back from break. Andy, you goonie. Well, it's either this hand or the next one, Andrew Hume. Are we close to a money jump by any chance? 95. So yes, two more eliminations and an increased payout could be yours. I was hoping yeah, it does. for Andrew's all in, we would get a race, a human race, but it doesn't look likely with the deuce of spades showing. It does leave the 2K back just to give himself some extra time to make Another decision, perhaps a bust out or two can happen in that time. Halsman does not want to get involved on the button with King Jack, and it's going to be up to the big blind. No. Wow. Gets through. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> well, then. Yeah, that's interesting. We're never going to know what that other card was. Salzman's going, why didn't I call? Yeah, per pretty surprising to see that fold on the button. Seven bigs now for Andrew Hume. And Hume has got the ladder, by the way, down to 94 players. Maybe you shouldn't have been so pessimistic about your prediction, Joe. I like to I like to gamble big. Gamble big, win big. That's what I say. <laughs> I like Versailles raising to sixteen thousand with Jack Ten of Spades. James, according to Janos, actually Deke equals Deke equals Deke in Hungarian. Thank you for your comment. Sorry, D backwards three, A colon K. That's how I've been saying it, isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a domination situation with Stefan Saltzman calling with the better jack, ace jack, and now... Our concern, Mets, with the King of Hearts and something else in the small blind. Ooh, baby. Wow. The shove from Cern Mets, all in for 312,000. Hume folds the big. Action back on Basayev. Wow. This shove reeks. 
of strength. I completely agree. Ace of hearts, king X. Yeah, and even if you're a Basayev, knowing that you're likely to be live, hopefully, you are still on the verge of a pay jump. I don't think that it is the time to call it off here with the Jack-10 suited. <sighs> hey, Saltzman, where's Broccoli? Ooh. Hey, Burb. Where's Al? That shelf gets through. Erkin is twerking. Power poker. So still 94 players remaining. Average stack right now, 342,000. And we are heading out into the field. Action from the outer tables. And it's a player who we had at our feature table earlier on today, Toru Ida, who is all in. Join the hand pre-flop. Looks like the decision is on Ramon Kalilas, and Ramon has called, putting Ida at risk. Let's go, Team Pro. That is a pair of tens for Toru Ida, and Ramon has called with ace jack Ooh. so classic race ace on the flop ace on the turn and that will do it for toro ida eliminated cashing out and ramon now playing a stack of six hundred and forty thousand. oh my lord that's okay. a lot of chipperinos right now guys this guy's good he is good Confirm Team Pro. Hold it. Oh, we heard the words. Yeah. Uh, Nicola Greco called under the gun plus one, and now Andrew Hume has shoved from the small blind. I'm wondering what his limping range is. <laughs> It's got to be traps, right? That's the <laughs> only thing like I can think of. Guy, yeah, it's traps. The guy yeah. opens with eight do suited from early position. This guy is trapping for sure. Trapping with deuces. <laughs> Actually, trapping I think I think deuces. I think Maria's point stands. <laughs> yeah. Like monster. I'm not liking the fact he hasn't put the chips in. Don't worry, guys. I'll play tight. A3 suited or better. 33. Oh, Andrew okay. Hume, the at-risk player, but the 4-1 to one favorite. Trying to prepay over there. That's never a good sign. <laughs> Does not want the dealer to drop a deuce on the table. You nervous? <laughs> Just has to fade that Pubmeref pipe block on the river. <laughs> literally, quite literally, a gut shot. <laughs> <laughs> and that is going to see Andrew Hume double up again. Yeah, a little look of confusion there, you guys. He's like, really? Just want to limp a coat off with deuces? Is that what you want to do? Are we Heelman or are we Dancer? Or are we Dancer? Oh, big line. Yeah. So the payouts have gone up. Another Correct. one, another one K ish. Yeah, with ninety four players remaining, we're now paying. 11,550 euros. Of course, it was confirmed earlier on that the winner of this year's EPT Monte Carlo main event will get 939,840 euros.
All right, so initial raise here, UTG Greco with Jack Nine of Spades taking it down. There's only one Greco in poker worth talking about for my money, and that's Michael Greco. Beppe. <gasps> Michael Greco. Wow. It's been a minute since I've seen him. Maria, you're a huge EastEnders fan, aren't you? Huge as in never watched it, but heard it was a great show. You don't have to lie and... about not watching EastEnders. <laughs> you really don't. It's not a great show at all. Don't worry, Maria. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Just in case Michael Greco is listening to this broadcast. Oh, he hasn't been in it for years. Don't worry. <laughs> Also, Maria, you know, who, by the way, you know who is in EastEnders now, though? Who? Ross Boatman. Uh, oh, yes, I heard that. Yeah, that's awesome. Maria, you know, Maria and I, you know, play with a, a couple of actors, and I, I, this is not name dropping. They just happen to be actors. And when they're in things that are bad, they know it. They don't lie about it. They don't need us to pretend like the stuff they're in is good. Maria's more of a fan of the show called The Expanse, which uh, reminds me of a cable access sci-fi oh. show. La vita, la vita. Yeah, I still need to get on The Expanse. I started, started <laughs> it, but never uh, It's never pretty continued. good. Apparently, everyone in space boom, has boom, a Canadian boom. accent. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Degrassi in space. Relax. <laughs> So 93 players remaining, and 93 was Maria's prediction. So you need 24 minutes of poker, Maria, with no KOs. Like a roller coaster Possible. for you? You know, nice times like this, I really wish Vogel I mean, like, was still in and Quas was still in, so they could take a little bit more time in between hands. We don't see quite as many hands played. That would help. My brain is uh, Too hot. Eh? Perfetto. I don't want to do that. It's safe to the biggest enemy. It's just one of them. It's not good. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to get out of here. No. I'm going to get out of here. Then there's a lot of people. Cosa che you and lei know that we don't have. I've seen it. Ci possiamo dare la mano. Players seem pretty genial at this table. Pretty happy with their progress so far. I'm sure all of them are very much looking forward to the end of this level and the end of play for today. It's been a long old day. Yeah. And it's a lot of poker to be uh, to be focusing on during that time. And we have got to do the same tomorrow. Bear in mind, we need to get this game finished by Saturday. So another long session tomorrow. Another six and a half levels of poker to be played. Is it just me or is the uh, final table of this taking place on Chat Pro Saturday? <laughs> Should be a blast. <sighs> yeah, that'll be interesting, guys. Get that ban hammer ready. <laughs> no, no bans on Chat Pro Saturday. Yeah. Nobody's wrong. Well, not not for most, but there's still some spoilers and some things people yeah. can get banned for. Never count those out. Also, I don't need a reason. I just like banning people. <laughs> you know, sometimes you just pour yourself a glass of red wine, you know, lay back and just, you know, Saul's been made the tight lay down with King Jack before for fewer chips than this. Slightly different dynamic, though. That was an under the gun shove. And it looks like we are going to get a call this time. 10, 20, 30, 40. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
it does kind of feel like Salzman just is a little unsure of what the correct calling ranges are supposed to be. I think, you know, at this point in time, you have to try to accumulate chips and you do that by knocking people out, even if it is, you know, a significant portion of your own stack. But from the button all in, you definitely have to be calling from the big blind with oh, yeah. all kinds of hands. Yeah. So Masayev is the at-risk player and the player who is dominated. Getting pretty close to 89 players remaining. Masayev about to go <laughs> bye bye <-ev. laughs> <laughs> Okay. Hmm. okay. Yeah. Okay. Little sweat. Top pair for Saltzman, but the straight draw for Basayev. Nines and aces working for him. He's drawing live. <laughs> <laughs> Five of diamonds, no help on the turn. No. Still has eight outs. Nine or an ace required on the river. It's a four. And that'll do it for Oleg okay. Basayev. Watch the stairs. 93rd place finisher, 11 and a half grand, 92 remain now. They asked Oleg what happened. He said, sorry, Basayev to go. <laughs> I took all the good ones. Yeah. Thanks for your effort, Nick. I try. I'm not good at those ones, you guys. You're the pros. Well, I'm officially out of the race for how many players are going to be left at the end of play tonight. I mean, it's a lot further from my number than it is from yours. <laughs> 19 minutes to go. 19 minutes left. I know I tanked on my on my prediction, but looks like looks like I'm going to be pretty close. Yeah, I think your prediction's a solid one, Nick, and I actually think that, you know, one, if we get to 89, there's a fair few eliminations that will be needed for Joe to be closer. Especially, Snowman's num-num. Especially given that I think people may be clinging to make it to the next day, too, right? Yeah. There sure. is that sense of achievement, even though in the grand scheme of things, it's pretty meaningless. It doesn't really matter yet. It sounds nice. It sounds nice to say to your friends, I'm going back for day three. Yeah. yeah. I found a bag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, going to day three, that's a cool thing to say. You put it on your social media, you know, everyone's hyped for you. I get it. I get it. Maria, do you feel like you've transcended, you know, that, that desire to perhaps change your game at the very end of the, Have you... Have you found the strength to continue playing your absolute A game relentlessly, regardless of whether or not it might bust you just before a day three run? I think nine out of 10 times I do. Um, but then I usually end up regretting it. Like I've busted <laughs> at the end of a day a fair few times by wanting to stick to, you know, playing how I would normally play and not really thinking about that. Um, yeah, I mean, you but. know, I think I think if you if it affects you too strongly, Oh, look at this flop, sorry. Before we carry on, a huge flop for everyone involved here. Wow. Oh, so, my. Deke ahead for now with the set of eights. Top pair and the flush draw for Magliocco. And, oh, Grico's playing as well. I guess he's got the 10 high flush draw. The 10 is the biggest card you can get as far as numbers are concerned. It's the top number. <laughs> oh, this is crazy. Yeah, and I think that the fact that Greco is last to act here is going to really influence, you know, the play moving forward because he's in position. He can make a pretty informed decision if the, if the Ten of Clubs improves and whether, you know, based on the, the um, action that he sees from the two players out of position against him. Well, still three players as we go to the turn. 
Sorry, heads up to the turn with 160k in the middle. Yep, there was a raise there from the King Queen with the Queen of Clubs. Mm. Frankie quickly betting. So, I know it's late, but one more club and it's a chop, right? Unless it's a board pairing club and then it's a full house for Deke. No. 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 Was any of that right? If the board pairs, he will have a full house with eights. <laughs> But a club on the river would not chop it. What about a board pairing club? Hit it, Still Nick. not a chop. <laughs> oh, it's not a chop, Maria, if it's a board pairing club? <laughs> oh. Okay, this is the exact situation I was just talking about. <laughs> okay. Not a board pairing club, though. Can't be a board pairing. Okay, you're just you. Oh done wow, it. <laughs> Maria, Maria, how did you fall for that one? I don't know. I just <laughs> is it is it mean to say like I just actually think Stapes could be a genius? <laughs> <laughs> oh. hmm. I've just come up with something that literally never existed <laughs> until this a moment. Board pairing club. I love it. The flush and. And uh, <laughs> this is uh... ninety-two <laughs> players. Let's go. Get it in. <laughs> Frankie Magliocco, one hundred twenty-one big blinds. This one? Pie Face Poker says it's 15:45 in LA. By the way, <laughs> which, by the way, isn't even a real time, and I'm the one that's crazy. <laughs> I'll meet you at this, 15 o'clock. What? This and, uh, and uh, this. Go home, you're drunk. The first. Prima. I didn't see. Sorry, no, that was. Uh, ah, that was so I just realized the clock has been paused and they actually drew for no, the number of hands to play tonight and sure. the maximum uh, number got drawn. Yeah, Five yeah, more yeah. hands. We drew high. Uh, we drew high. Seven, no. Two cards. Two cards is million. I think, James, you're going to win it then. It, it's the closest without going over. So, I mean, I can't win, even though if it stays at 92, I'm one off. But that's not Price is Right rules, you know? So the closest without going under, you mean? I don't know. Yeah, don't right. Essentially. You pick 90. I did yeah. pick 90, yeah. yes. Okay, without going possible, over please. the number of eliminations. Yeah. Right. All right, we can have a little bit more of the Nicola Grico show before we call it a night tonight. I'm down for that. I demand he's at the feature table tomorrow, actually. I, who do I have to put in that request? Do you think with? he plays totally different if he's not at the feature table? Just plays like snug, solid? <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised, honestly. He, he kind of seems like he, he likes to get involved when the cameras are around. He, yeah. he probably doesn't raise the eight do suited. You know, he he has a wider range than most still, but he might pass on some of those hands. Yeah, I'm picking up, picking up on that vibe. I think I can see that. Hey, good for Andrew Hume getting the under the gun steal done with Queen Jack off and still a pretty short stack. Down to 91 now. I don't know, I've got a good feeling about 89 next. Yeah. I just need nine eliminations in the next four hands. Can we do it? No, because if we're playing by Maria's rules, which is closest without going under, if we get to 88, you win by default. Yeah. Oh. It's like I bid a dollar. <laughs> Right. One dollar, Bob. Exactly. <laughs> My two favorite words in the English language, default. <laughs> 90. Okay, uh -oh. I can't afford any more KOs. 
Yeah, I'm kind of with Zoomer's daddy here, even though it does not benefit me. No, that makes no sense. But okay. thank That's... you for your comment. Fine. I'll, I'll take the win. I need him. <laughs> hey, Frankie Magliocco. Frankie, do you remember me? People spell Frank with a CK. I, I don't know. <coughs> Special Agent Frank Calfon spelled, spelled it that we'll way. We'll see CK he also. Was a CK. Another two. Three. Three. One. 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 <laughs> uh, <laughs> I won't finish today. What are we laughing about? Tomorrow is another day. Mm. Yeah? If it wasn't something I said, I'm generally not paying attention. So clearly we are coming to the end of day two of the EPT Monte Carlo main event. We will, of course, be streaming day three. That's tomorrow or technically later today. So make sure you're with us from 12.30 p.m. at Central European Summertime. And we will stream days four and five as well, five being the final <laughs> table. There he is, Papa Greeks. Nikki G. You know, got to get in an early position steal at the end of the night, as you do. He's going to get fours to fold. Nikki G and his fraternity. I don't know, man. If you know what Greco's opening range is, I feel like Ace Deuce, maybe. I guess he's still a player act behind. I don't know. Cards like that, what I kind of feel like you're face. not gonna bet, but that's just me. Oh, Barry Greenstein. <laughs> he does bet. Rep that ace, baby. Rep it. Gets away with one wow. there. Present for me, goal. Just press 16. You have a big fish. <laughs> it's not Chat Pro wow. Saturday yet, another fish one, Don't who talk, says please. you've lost 10 people in less than 30 minutes. Can't see this lasting three never. more days. <laughs> Just like it's the best. To be fair, it's a perfectly standard thought to have. I still have that thought sometimes. <laughs> I'm like, guys, this is going to be over. Like, <laughs> <laughs> this ain't our first rodeo. <coughs> Just two more hands to play. Oh, really? Come on. 10-4 suited? Yeah. What a nit. What a nit. Like, grow a pair, really. <laughs> Thousand with the dominating hand. Plus Simon, one. He Just grew a left. pair. He actually limped them. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Salzman's going to open the pot instead, making it the Salz Maniac, as he's known by back home. Was that just a flat set? Excuse me. He didn't was, He didn't raise it at all. He's flatting here with ace 10 UTG plus one. Well, you know, it's the second to last hand of the day, Nick. You can't be too careful. Yeah. What you got? Magliocho. What if you're trapping with ace 10 off? I mean, on this table, we never really know. It's kind of cool. Sixes gets to limping as well.
Stone Mez, who hasn't really played a whole lot of hands, definitely haven't gotten out of line, just been really patient. What does he have up his sleeve? Yeah, he's been cultivating that table image. And now he's going to put it to work. 6, 12, 18, 24, a little bit over 4x raise there. Oh, and Hume <laughs> playing a 13 big blind stack. Wakes up with ace queen, moves all in, and is Sunmet priced in with a dominated hand? Yeah, I wonder if um wonder if that's a bit of a misstep, right? I mean, Queen Jack off from the cutoff anyway. This isn't a super conventional squeeze situation. Maybe you agree with me, Maria, but um, having a player to, direct, to your direct left who is so short does make things awkward because, of course, now you're going to have to gamble with him no matter what. Just take down to 89, Nick. You're oh. winning. Oh, baby. And, the, well, and For you, maybe. maybe and, not for and very likely going to see an all-in here, I, I imagine. Even though I'm invested in this, I can't root for the worst hand to win. And bust out here. Yeah. Feels nice not to get spent, huh? So just have like pocket tens one time, he says. In this case, it is a domination situation. Pocket six. Yeah. Yeah, but you see, pocket six is good. I'm coming to. Ten and four. Oh. The rotation. Mm. Oh, really? Break out the humidor because Andrew is smoked. <laughs> well, that's decisive. And we do get another KO. Andrew Hume eliminated on the second to last hand of the day. And that's going to take us to 88 players. So, Joe, it's in the bag, buddy. Chicken dinner, my babies. Robbed. I was robbed there. That was my domination situation to win the side bet. But Queen Jack finding not only one, but two of those jacks required to eliminate the Hume man. Can, you, can somebody write down that humidor joke for the TV? Please. Oh, I won't remember it. <laughs> Please. Please. I love Please. the fact you think anyone on the production team is listening to you. Write that down. Talk to me. This guy is kidding everyone. I was pretty good, I thought. Please. Joe's hit his quota for funny things said today. You earned your $190 per day. I know, I know. You're a great guy. <laughs> It feels pretty Please. par no, for the no, course no, no, no. that Snape's oh. only wins when we bet nothing and there's absolutely nothing on the line. <laughs> <laughs> Last hand of the day. See? Uh -uh. <laughs> Part of the 80s asks, how long they play today? We're going to take after this hand... We're going to take like a tw 11 and a half hour break and we'll be back <laughs> for more of day two. Greco with a real hand in the big blind. The reluctant call. He's the best. There's, there's a lot of sighing at this table. <laughs> Ace high still ahead. Because yeah. of you. Check. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most equity he's had in yeah. hours, and he's <laughs> just praying for a free yeah. card. Check. Check. Not concerned about timing tells. Just check, check. Okay, yeah, yeah. We both agree we're going to check it down. All right, cool. Let's, let's just do that. Let's do that. And I think that means we are done for the day. At least the feature table. Yeah, all these players will get to bag and tag and come back for day three when we will pick up the second half of this blind level. We'll start tomorrow with the blinds at 3,000, 6,000. Play out the remaining 45 minutes and then do a segue straight into level 18. 
Uh, AD, AD, though, where is AD? So it looks like 87 players remaining. Just need to check. There are no hands in progress in the field, no potential eliminations before we close proceedings. Guys, it's been a long day. Thank you very much for your company today. A reminder, we are going to do it all again tomorrow. It'll be a similar length day. Yeah. Good for me. You. Don't make us do it alone. You, 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 you did fine. I won't make you do it alone. Next time, I'm going to make you do it alone. Nope, we're in it together, boys. And Maria, excuse me. <laughs> yeah, Maria, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thank you. Enjoy your beauty rest, boys. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay. So let's see how things ended at this feature table. We had a variety of feature tables on the main stage over the course of the day. We finished with this particular lineup. And let's see the stacks they will be bringing into day three of this main event. Could be that Frank Deek is still the overall chip leader. Frankie Magliocco also a big stack. Yeah, Silvestre Cacaldi. Not so big, six big blinds, has some work to do. So a reminder that the current cash as players are eliminated is 11 and a half thousand euros. Big money up top. Six figure scores for the top seven, nearly a million for the winner. Total prize pool in this year's Monte Carlo main event, five 0.2 million. So we played through the bubble today. 86, looks like 86 players will be returning for day three. Uh, if you missed any of the action earlier on, if you want a summary of what happened today, including a recap of the all important bubble, or you want to know about any of the side events being played here, check out the Pokestars blog. They're running updates from the main event and selected other tournaments at the EPC Monte Carlo Festival. And make sure you join us for more live streaming of this event tomorrow. Obviously, we appreciate your company today. You, we want you with us for the next few days, and we will be here tomorrow, or later today in our part of the world, 12.30 Central European Summer Time. We'll see you then. Until then, from Maria Ho, Griffin Benjamin, Nick Walsh, Joe Stapleton, and me, James Hartigan, it is good night from Monaco. We got what you want, we got what you want, we got what you want to so come.